Hey guys, it's the grand finals of the Castle Cup and Petit Drogo and Pig are facing Honor and Red Panda. Who can take it all in this double one-on-one -on -one, and if it's 1-1 one -one in score, 2-on-2 two -two decider clan war. Watch to find out. Anyway, we're going to find out in a moment, ladies and gentlemen. We're going into game number one of the grand finals of the Castle Cup between Bonjois, Honor, and Petit Drogo. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, I'm hyped for this. Honor is just about top 100 on the elo of the ladder right now. Petit Drogo has been ranked 60 before, dropped to the, the 300 plus nether regions and climbed back up all because he was practicing chinese he's currently almost top 100 should be an extremely competitive match we're looking at the layout of altai we can see that on the left side of honor's base is a rather thick mountain range that is covering one relic we see that the sacred side is unusually exposed uh, accessible via three paths the south side sacred side is also accessible via three paths and then we've got four relics on the bottom side of the mountain range. Uh, close to blue, close to red, but certainly closer to red. <laughs> All four relics strewn now, about the bottom side. Petit Drogo doesn't have a single one near him. The one that I think would procedurally have spawned near him spawned this on the one. opposite side of the range instead. So, um, yeah, a little bit of better access for honor to get those. And, you know, that's something that um, we didn't talk about too much, but because... Delhi has access to their religious units from the first age. There is the ability for them to try and get those relics earlier as well. And they already have mosques built to put the relics inside. So that could be something, especially even if he scouts and, and realizes, hey, wait a minute, I got I got good access to most of the relics here. Uh, that might be a, a feature of the mid-game strategy for honor as well. Exactly. Well... Early game has begun. Honor has gone for uh, an opening. There are a few options for Delhi. You can choose to open with uh, sheep farming, sheep gathering, and that saves you some wood. And that means uh, you may be able to tech up a little bit faster, but he's gone for a very quick mill, an early mosque, and an early lumber camp as well. So he can get all the economy upgrades that cost other resources, cost other sips resources, he can get those for free. Wheelbarrow, forestry. And that's going to give him a nice little boost with that. They finish earlier these days. Scout Scouting has begun. Petit Drogo has decided to go for a small loop around back to base to bring back initial sheep and go all the way around the perimeter of the map. And that's Petit Drogo's vision. Now, where? what is the other vision here? I want to see that one more time for Honor to see just his vision, where his scout went and whether Drogo will be fishing behind the nets. And it looks like he will, in fact, be following with his scout where uh, Honor has already been. And that's always bad. There won't be any sheep left. Oh, yeah. Yeah, even just a little bit behind means he's going to lose the ability to capture those sheep. He may, in fact, uh, redirect his scout and go someplace else as a as a result of that. So, yeah, there he is. He's actually kind of just running around here. So we, And actually, Honor's dropped off those sheep as well, making sure. And now one of the... Uh, Things that we're seeing on this map is you actually do start with a hunt or a set of deer camps uh near your base so it's actually a little bit easier to get that food income from that as well um and of course you always start with berries near your base and delhi gets a bonus to uh gathering berries so a lot of food available for both players in this instance and that may be actually i'm just a random consideration as to why they didn't play the roost on this map because a little bit more difficult to actually get the deer out from underneath your opponent's base if you're going for professional scouts. Exactly. Um, there's but always yeah, now that we one do deer... see... Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. Uh, there's always that one deer camp that's a very uh, close proximity to your opponent. That's true. So we're seeing Honor's uh, point of view here, and he actually looks like he only has... Again, we're seeing this bug where it's not actually going to show what buildings were scouted, uh, even yeah. though he's actually scouted them, just the area. So um, he did kind of go over and find Petit Drogo's base, and then again went kind of go going around. The, the sheep are usually scattered around the outskirts and a few in the valley in the middle. So they're both just trying to gather those up, because even though you have deer and berries, getting a good cache of sheep is, uh, is a good idea too. You have to deny them from your opponent, if anything. 
And now we see that Drogo for the first time in mm. today in the Castle Cup is opening with the Imperial Academy. Now, this nice. is kind of an underwhelming landmark that offers bonus tax drop-offs. So every time a villager drops off resources in a, in a gathering building of the Chinese, they will also generate one pick up tax for an Imperial official to pick up. Now with an upgrade, if you get the upgrade, no, sorry, without the upgrade, just if it's in the influence of the Academy, they'll generate two gold instead of one. Right. Thing is, I don't think it's very powerful. Usually you're not using Imperial officials that much past the six minute mark to collect taxes. It's a lot of supervision of buildings. Still, mm. it's neat. More than that, it is a concession towards, it is a recognition that Drogo for the first time will be doing villager boom. He'll be going most likely for right. Song Dynasty is what that proves. Yeah, very likely. Um, the Chinese can build both of their landmarks. So even though he's built the one tax collection landmark first, makes sense. You're making an investment in your economy. You want to do it earlier rather than later, so it pays off more in the long run. Um, but he can still go ahead and get the defensive Barbican of the Sun as well. And um, you know, this is a map with uh, a lot of resources. I guess all I guess this applies to all maps. The resources are spread out in a lot of different places. So he may want to go ahead and put that near. Um, some other gathering resources. Um, in a rare instance, we might see him try and put it near the center to try and hold off against his opponent, but it's kind of a wide valley on this map, so I don't know if that would yeah. be the smartest move in this instance. Drogo is also going for professional scouts technology. You can finish it in 20 seconds, thanks oh. to the supervision. Scouts are being made. Oh, and he's supervising the stables as well. Oh, man. I've played a lot of Chinese. I can't believe I've never thought of supervising the stables <laughs> for fast scout production. Seven seconds instead of 20 is really sweet. A very different game style, the both of them. Scouts technology, and on the other side, Honor, he's doing deli things. And to be honest, <laughs> what, what are they? What are the deli things that are happening here? We see he has multiple uh, scholars already, but and we know that he's getting Sanctity upgrade. I'm not quite sure what Honor's game plan is yet. So he's got an archery range for some archers. He's got a barracks for some spears. I find that's a lot of unit attribution in the early game for a Delhi uh, Moltrap. Yeah, he. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of curious where this is coming from as well. It might be that he is hoping to go for something early. I mean, you know, having mm. melee units with ranged units behind them is a solid strategy no matter what, uh, it, it, in a general sense. And, you know, he, I'm not sure if he's gone back to see the Imperial Academy, but he again might be assuming that there's some sort of economic uh, play being made by Petit Drogo, and he wants to punish it with an early push. Of course, as you mentioned, research, as we both mentioned, research is free, so you can theoretically get the RAM production upgrade without too much effort if he gets, decides to make a, uh, a blacksmith. But he's actually getting a second mosque, so this is kind of interesting. Um, he's going to be able to... He, he just finished filling one of his... Uh, oh, he's actually coming in! He's going with the professional scouts. He's grabbing oh. the deer from underneath... Oh, wow, he's grabbing the deer camp right next to his town oh. center. Seven scouts coming in, getting every single deer in one fell swoop and retreating with them. Oh, man. I mean, uh, Honor has those berries, at least, uh, which are good for Delhi, but that's a, a bit of a a bit of a yoink right there. Bit of a sucker punch there. Petit Drogo steals 2,450 potential food to be gathered. Wow. And he's taking that away. The other deer camp is in the far south side, very far away, and Honor, not getting the professional scouts technology, not really a deli thing because of how long it takes. Hard to contest. But in the meantime, Honor is doing other things. He's built up a wall with his infantry mm. on the right side of the map. That is covering the most likely attack route for Petit Drogo to stop Sacred Site control. The middle of the map has an outpost. Mm. Drogo did see this, but that is two places that have now been set up. Mm -hmm. And there's a third place coming with an outpost for sacred site control. So Honor wow. is with a delayed play to do triple scholar uh, sacred site control. Question is, where is his sanctity upgrade right now? Oh, he's gonna aggressively wall in Petit Drogo, who by the way, has accumulated oh, wow. enough resources to go castle age. Very interesting. Yeah, he's, he's definitely going for these triple sacred sites. As we mentioned before, this is Probably not a play to just try and win in 10 minutes. Um, if you let the Chinese go for 10 minutes and just depend on that, then it's not going to happen. Um, but, oh, actually, coming with these scouts, 
You know, they can't, they can do more than just harvest uh, deer and bring them back. They actually do significant damage to buildings. There's actually nothing in that outpost, though, so. Get in the outpost, Scholar! Yeah, he can get inside if he reacts. Um, but so he's going to be able to contest these sacred sites pretty well with these scouts running around the map until until Honor gets those defenses fully up and running, until he gets things inside the outposts, until he gets all of the walls up and running and all the light places. There's still a couple gaps in the walls that T Drogo can get in and out of his base and around the map with the scouts or whatever else he wants to produce. Um, how do you react to this? Do you just use scouts or should he be making something else to, to deal with this or... or just kind of say, okay, well, you have the sacred sites. So I'll let you collect gold for a couple minutes until I get my, my game plan going. Uh, first of all, that villager should be using his spear. If you go melee, you you two shot the wolf. But that uh, that notwithstanding, yeah, I think he's doing part of it. Uh, how do you scout it? He's already uh, denied one of the sites. So good job with the scouts. You can start splitting the scouts and taking it back. But if you meet any spears at all, by the way, triple wolf back. If you <laughs> meet any spears, scouts can't get the job done. Tidrogo's got his uh, castle age. I feel like at this point you say, okay, Honor's gonna get way more resources than Drogo ever can, despite the deer mm -hmm. carcass heists. Mm -hmm. I think with a fast castle that Drogo has, you need to go for the sledgehammer attack. Ignore the gold generation and say, mm -hmm. you may have all the resources, but if you don't have the production time, you can't stop this attack. True. And there's still a small wall. Uh, Honor is trying to wall the entire map. This is the very last wall that still <laughs> is open. Had he brought this up, Lancers wouldn't be able to go through, but now Drogo is going to start attacking. And with those scouts on the map, he's been able to stop a lot of these walls from being you know, completed also. So there's a couple gaps around the map. He is still trying to go for the uh, deer around the map as well. Oh, look at this prelate body getting blocks. body blocked. Or, so not prelate, the scholar getting body blocked from getting to the sacred site. Uh, so he's not going to be able to get that site. But yeah, Honor still does have two sites, though, up and running right now that haven't been completely denied. Um, so he is starting to get that money in the bank. But as you mentioned, it's going to be, um, you know, a matter of if, is he going to have the army for it? Now, he has actually just reached Castle Age himself. Um, and so they both have the ability. It looks like there's not really going to be a timing where Petit Drogo can say, I have Castle Age units and you don't. Um, so he's they're both going to be on even terms, basically. He's trying to contest this site in the middle. To be able to run into the, the tower there and force the scouts away but um yeah, yeah. It... well drogo had an option here to use his knights to take down the outpost but he decides that it's not worth his time he's gonna go raid the villagers the impact comes here one villager goes down immediately to the charge damage the guandos with 26 melee attack will start chopping away at the villagers as well we've got 17 losses here for honor but oh, wow. Drogo hasn't lost a single unit. Oh, that is huge. So many units killed. Um, and he's still going. Still going, killing more stuff. There's a lot of villagers inside the town center. But um, as you mentioned, these are armored units. And one finally goes down. But he's going to be able to do a lot more damage here as he's running through here. The villagers just kind of standing in place. Finally, when the uh, danger arrives right at their feet, they're going to run away. But significant damage being done regardless. This is a really big economic raid going on here. Uh, Honor taking significant damage to his villager count. And neither of these players went for a second town center, I believe. And so Honor, these losses are really hard to come back from. There's, he's, he doesn't have very much of a way of reproducing them. Yeah, he's got his castle, he's got the walls, but it's like 90% of a plan. This is really mm. interesting because Honor was 90% away from walling off the map. He was then 66% of the way of three sacred site control. But it's all a story of not quite, not quite clean enough. And mm. that's where the random map comes in. If a map is always the same, like in other RTSs, then you can plan these things out perfectly with a sense of timing. Here it's adaptation. That final wall wasn't up, allowing these knights to get through without any warning. Honor is losing a lot of villagers and a lot of units. And although he's getting a lot of gold, and again, those sacred sites, they're worth a lot of villagers, like 10 villagers worth those two sites. So he's allowed to lose 10 and he can still feel fine. But this hurts, small trap. This hurts. Yeah. He does have a couple barracks up and he's garrisoned a scholar in one of them. So he's now starting to produce the units that he needs to counteract these heavy cavalry units. He's getting some spears out, some crossbows as well. So it looks like that's probably the end for this harassment. But as you can see at the top of the screen there, the damage was done. 
dozens of units have been killed off. And as you mentioned, he still hasn't secured all the sacred sites. There's not that objective ticking down or anything along those lines. Um, I don't even know if the walls have been completed at this point. However, he did go for the um, compound of the defender. So he can actually, mm. if he wants to, reiterate those walls with stone walls and try and double down on this strategy of containing his opponent with stone walls. Not a <laughs> good idea against, um, you know, Chinese trebuchets necessarily, but it's an option. Yeah, exactly. Uh, stone walls are going to be able to keep out scouts and cavalry which are actually able to burn wooden palisades, but not so much stone walls. So it would force Petit Drogo to adapt away from this army. As it stands, Petit Drogo is holding the button on the keyboard that produces cavalry and is getting <laughs> paid off big time. We have 48 villagers for Petit Drogo in the meantime. On the other side for honor, it must be far less. We have 34 villagers. So, okay, that's a 15 villager difference, but with two sacred sites, you can think of it as a five villager deficit. Definitely not a point of no return, Moltrap. And um, just to point it out, because we did mention it earlier on, none of the relics have been taken right now, even though that is an option for Honor right now. He's age three. He has plenty of scholars lying around. He could go and grab a couple of those relics right nearby him and boost that gold income to be more than equivalent of that five villager uh, deficit if he wanted to. And... Um, in the meantime, Petit Drogo just running around the map with these knights. There's not really much to, to, to stop them from doing so. Uh, spears are a very good counter, but they're super slow. Um, I don't know if he has the Forced March upgrade, but, you know, running all the way across the map is not <laughs> going to be happening in 10 seconds of that of that uh, ability. And so in the meantime... Oh! Oh, I'm sorry. I thought that yeah, was... Yeah, those are all his. <laughs> those are his. I saw, I saw Nest of Bees damage falling on a group of units, and I got excited, but it's actually just No friendly fire. No friendly fire. Uh, interesting to note, by the way, this honor outpost has the upgrade. It goes from a thousand mm -hmm. health to two thousand, and it gains five fire armor, which actually makes it uh, thirty-three percent more resilient to to any melee attack torch damage. Mm. Uh, and he also gave it the spring ult emplacement, allowing it to do sixty damage a pop into knights. So he's probably killed a one or two knights or so, but it still eventually went down. Mm -hmm. Honor's walls again, partially unbuilt. They're like a resource sink that hasn't paid off yet. We now have a transition from Petit Drogo into Men at Arms. Both Men at Arms and Knights essentially can get countered by crossbows if crossbows mm -hmm. have a tank. But uh, Men at Arms can't be countered by spears and he's right. seen a number of them. So he's looking to add complexity to his army while keeping two units that benefit and enjoy the same upgrades. Yeah, that's an interesting um, uh, move. Usually the kind of gut reaction would be, oh, they've got spears, I'm going to get archers. Going for the right. men-at-arms, though, is a really interesting choice. They're a little bit more expensive, but they're going to be a lot beefier, and they're going to be a lot more effective in killing your opponent's buildings. He's going in for another assault here. Looks like he's going to be just running right around the main town center. There's actually a keep, a keep <laughs> in honor's supply lines to protect all of his villagers. And uh, it's going to do have some work to do because these knights... And uh, men at arms are really just going to work chopping down villagers next to this town center. And I'm not sure what exactly he's... Oh, he is targeting the archery range, actually. He's just starting to target some buildings and saying, you know what? I've got all armored units. Oh, Nesta B is going after the villagers before they can get in. They do get into the town center. So now it's going to be 20 shots instead of 8. Sorry, 19 shots instead of 8. He's going to retreat now. But that's the advantage with having all armored units is you don't really have to think too much about arrow fire from town centers. Um, right. or or even from keeps um, when you're going to do your harassment and so he's running out of that situation with almost as many troops as he ran into it with scholar walks by <laughs> he's a man <laughs> of peace so he will not be attacked uh, nice convention oh. observation by petit drogo but one side has been taken again at the bottom side of the map zero relics scholar is looking to garrison up a few crossbows, spears and men at arms are marshalling for honor but his economy must be in absolute shambles uh, he's making another keep, 600 stone apiece instead of 800. He's been gathering mm. stone, and they are meant to be a fallback point. Ah, but Drogo's going to find it. Oh, no. Yeah, I don't think this keep is going to complete. I think <laughs> those knights are going to be more than enough to f finish off uh, a dozen villagers, and they know it. They're going to retreat as well and get out of dodge, um, trying to protect those farms that they were going to go back to as well. A few spearmen coming into play, but this is enough knights to actually deal with that amount of spearmen, and look, he's actually chasing some of the villagers with some of his knights, ignoring the spearmen altogether, and uh, just running rampant around Honor's base right now. Um, 
that keep is really doing a lot of work though. I, I kind of like that yeah. a lot. Putting a keep in your supply line doesn't really, I, I don't know if I've seen that before actually, but it's been really, really effective. He's like, all right, well, if you're gonna send in knights to harass me, boom, just 600 stone, does a lot of defense for that. Um, exactly, and it's kind of protecting his wood line. He's building up farmland behind there. So it seems like a quirky move, but it's providing that fallback point uh, it's also got a Springled Emplacement, which is also mm. cheaper because of its H3 landmark, able to take that, down those knights. Now, in Age of Empires 4, if this keep gets cancelled, even if you cancel it manually, you're going to get subtract uh, the HP that you lost. So you will lose stone. You're not getting back the full 600 when it has taken damage. And it seems that's the, and the end result here. Now the Palace Guards are going to make Rams, uh, Moltrap. Oh no, yeah, he's, it looks like he's going for the kill. He realizes, okay, I think I've done enough damage now that I've got enough of an advantage that he's not gonna be able to stop me if I actually move in here because he's won engagement after engagement. Looks like he might, he's, he hasn't canceled this yet. He might try and fight it out. This might be actually a last ditch effort. And there we go. Oh. He was thinking if I lose this keep, I lose my economy and I lose the game. I have to fight for it. And he tried to fight for it, but it wasn't enough. Petit Drogo is going to take the victory. Um, Honor saw the inevitable, was not forced to accept the inevitable at the head of Rams, and leaves the game. GG. Honor losing the first game, Petit Drogo taking the series to a 1-0 lead in the Grand Finals. If his teammate can take the second game, they will be splitting $5,000 between them. Mm. Well, Petit Drogo is really something else, huh? It feels like he's uh, yeah. channeling French-English styles as Chinese. Always <laughs> one singular town center. He felt that uh, that is going to be the way to play this game. And who knows what would have happened? There's a lot of ifs. If Honor got the wall up on time, could he have? Would that have helped? What was his plan behind it? But those are all ifs by the wayside. It's Petit Drogo with his excellent build choices and aggression and follow-ups with the killer instinct that will be standing triumphant here and getting that victory, killing a lot of villagers and just pushing yeah. for the win. And even though he went for the Imperial uh, Academy earlier um, as his economic uh, sort of boost in the early game, he still didn't go for, you know, stereotypical, I'm going to build the Barbican, I'm going to build the Academy, and I'm going to wait until I have a million special bombards and win the game yeah. in a half an hour he actually still went for an aggressive play he said okay look my opponent is trying to be active on the map trying to take control of these sites i'm gonna do something active on the map as well he built uh you know his knights instead and decided okay well heavy cavalry is something that's gonna be good against these defensive places it's gonna be good against the palisade walls he's building it's gonna be um able to dodge the spears that he's building well i guess he built the spears in response but um, he just said, you know what, I'm not going to go with something cheeky like Juke Nu or, you know, anything like that. He's just, I'm going to get some horsemen and, uh, or cavalry, I should say, and just be active on the map and win a straight up, uh, a strategic play rather than going in from any, going for anything, um, specific or cute with his civilization. Yeah, exactly. And I think, well, it's kind of cute in and of itself. I think that's the first time I've seen Imperial Palace Landmark. <laughs> without without the Barbican follower. Normally it's always like, yeah, I'll get the Barbican two minutes later. And I'll mm. go Song Dynasty. Never seen this. And it, right. it shows how offensively oriented he was, that he said this Barbican, this glorified defense tower, I don't need it. I'm going to be doing the attacking. And we can see some yeah. of those attacks here in these replays that we've accumulated. Oh, this is the, uh, the seven scout deer yoink of champions right here running in right underneath the town center fire grabbing them all and just taking a few hits honestly not that many and again you know honor doesn't really have a lot to deal with this right now so he just has to accept his deer being yoinked and now he's this is when he came into yoink some villagers as well yeah several villager kills here uh, only a single knight had gone down at this point and uh he's killed about i want to say five units ten villagers by this point you see more losses in the graph of honor, but cancelled walls count as losses. You look at the kill count, mm. that's what really happened. And Petit Drogo, just with incredible cast efficiency here, is scouts and knights able to burn down even these upgraded towers. You could see a second upgrade there queuing in on that outpost. 
and uh, it wasn't on time. He was probably getting the fire armor, the double health that this tower has. You see the stone structure, but even it was no match for the superior army. If there's anything we yeah. learned today, Mole Trap, from all of the games, I'd say making army is better than not making a lot of army. It's <laughs> a very, very astute point there. And notice, by the way, Tong Dynasty. He still he didn't even try and go for the Yuan Dynasty yep. once he reached him. Uh, castle age or anything like that. He's still on Tong Dynasty, which is the first dynasty that you start the game with. Um, just producing a bunch of units and uh, winning the game. He is making some nests of bees here. Um, they didn't really contribute a, a ton, but they at least were there in case his opponent came out with a bunch of spears. And here we're seeing him in this victorious moment, pumping his fist, breathing a sigh of, of victory there. He is so excited for that. Um, what awesome. a cool moment to capture there. Petit Drogo taking the win and putting himself within range of victory of the Castle Cup. But we still have to find out what's going to happen between his teammate and his opponent's teammate, Pig versus Red Panda. And we're going to go check out exactly what the map pick was for the second game. There's two left from the three after the bands between Lippany and Highview. Mm. And Bondra has picked Highview or game number two. No surprise at all. So many wolves on this map. Now, uh, just to catch it back up on the unique mm. civilization bonus, Roos can get five gold for a sheep, 25 for a wolf, uh, 25 for a deer, and 75 for a boar. I believe that's it. Maybe it's 10 for, mm -hmm. or 10 for a deer. Oh, it might be less for deer, I think. Yeah, wolf is 25, deer is, I think, 10. And all of that counts uh, for gold and for points as well. And so if they can get 250 points, which by the way, just to catch you back up on the sec first semifinals, you got 250 points. If you get 250, you've got bonus food gathering rate, bonus gold from your hunting cabins. If you get to 500, like against a player that doesn't contest animals at all, you get even more gold, even more gathering rates. It's pretty insane. We used to get this when the Civ was new, when the game was new. Now people are always denying that. So we will have French versus Rus, a lot of animals, and it's high view. Contrary to the name, view, it's actually low view because yeah. you can see almost it's nothing. Lowest view. Yeah, the lowest there is. It's stealth forest everywhere. Completely coated in stealth forests, um, which I think, you know, we've, I mentioned that a few times. It's kind of come into play a little bit. It can come into play a lot on this map. Um, we're probably going to have to see players either building outposts, which will provide vision, or, I mean, this will actually be really good for Red Panda. He's going to be producing a bunch of scouts anyways, more than likely. If you keep a, keep a scout with your army, they can see into and out of the secret forest. So if you keep scouts with your army, they'll kind of gain you vision in the area so you kind of know what's going on more and more. Um, you know, I've seen games on this map, uh, higher level ladder players, where they were ahead and they lost their entire army because... They just didn't see the army of scouts coming in to flank their bombards in the back, and they lost all of their siege units. And so, you know, the, the secret forests are a really big deal on this map because they're everywhere. Exactly. And, you know, just kind of talking about how you go around early map scouting as well. The sheep are never inside the sacred forest. So if you're looking mm -hmm. to actually pick up a lot of sheep, then you need to pick a route that cuts right through the forest rather than going alongside of it. Forest kind of or this highway all across the map. So you want to cut through it perpendicular and get the sheep. Sheep do rally towards you when you're near open areas while in the stealth forest, but because you can't see it, you could miss them by an inch and not get them. Wolves, mm. those are everywhere. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, now, what are we thinking about for the French for this instance? Because, hmm. you know, probably Red Panda, We're talking. this is a very good map for the Roos. The secret forests can be, you know, evaded by scouts a little bit more. There's often, I think, Roost will just put hunting cabins around this map because they're so low vision that you can hide hunting cabins and they can get free gold in the outskirts of the map and what have you. How is the French going to respond to that? Obviously, in age two, they can get out cavalry, which are going to be really effective against those scouts. But um, I'm not sure what other tools France is going to have in this instance. Um, I guess, like you said earlier, they can get more scouts with their school of cavalry as well and try and match the scouts of the roost perhaps yep and we're gonna find out that's an option and we remember what pig said he said uh he saw that trump in the game earlier when he beat trump 
was making a second town center and he just got all the mm. economic upgrades, which he feels is an illicit risk, but it worked out because of his opponent's passivity. Here, right. he should be expecting Red Panda to try to hit a four minute feudal timing, 430 perhaps, with a seven minute 30 castle timing, if it is not being slowed down. Big, if he wants to take the reins in this matchup and drive the chariot, he should like to open with non-stop Royal Knight production. And we can see that by the telltale five villagers on gold, even after the landmark starts, backed up by archers, backed up by a blacksmith, and then into rams. This used to be the shiz wall trap. Knights, archers, ram. And that's, mm -hmm. if you do that, you can not hit before the first horse archers, but there wouldn't be many yet. Or mm -hmm. you could go for a second town center. And we saw this recently in the... Um, winter series by egc and there was a french player he went for double town center uh i think it was Linock actually into the viper viper went mm. for rose he went for his horse archers Linock went french immediate second town center and said okay you may have army superiority a better unit from a higher tech you get all the relics you get the sites i'm gonna get loads of villagers and then i'm gonna prepare archers i'm gonna prepare knights and he lost really badly didn't work mm. out. Horse archers tore him apart, <laughs> killed villagers, kited his army. Yeah, I, I was setting it up like it was going to work, like, like so smart. <laughs> no chance. Caught me off guard there. Just like those deer got caught off guard by um, Pig actually picking off some of those uh, deer. He doesn't get a bonus because he's the French, but he's stopping Red Panda from getting that extra bonus. And you're right, it's, it's, it's pretty rare for a Roost player not to get 250. It is pretty rare for a Roost player to get to 500, so yeah. it might not be a consideration too much. But he's trying. He's trying. But again, even if he doesn't get to two, to, to 500, if he gets to 400, that's not just the bonus. That's that's gold that he's putting in the bank that he's using for his upgrades and what have you as well. So Exactly. Both players roaming around the map, killing everything Ooh, just red... to uh, try and do that. Red Panda's making a mistake. He's got three scouts out on the map. But he's got 10 villagers on go on food. And you can only fit eight villages around the dead carcass of the sheep. That's all he had left under his town center. Those villagers oh. will not show up as idols. You will think you're doing a good job of right. gathering. But for, I want to say, 20 seconds or so, they weren't doing anything. And then instead of bringing back sheep Prano, he delayed a bit. There's a lot of management for Roos. Scouts here and there, making new ones, allocating villagers. Yeah. And it's not the biggest of mistakes, but it's just going to slow down his timings a little bit for him to start his Golden Gate landmark at the 253 mark with six villagers. He's going to get to feudal, I want to say, about 430. You can get there at four minutes. The best players get there at four. Mm. Yeah, kind of greeting for the the deer gold and uh, missing out on some sheep food in the meantime by not exactly. getting any sheep back there. Very interesting. Um yeah, but he is he has killed a lot of sheep there. There's one just chilling he hasn't gotten yet. Oh man. And, um, he had a scout sitting right there and he didn't kill it. I don't know who got the final kill there though. Uh, you can see he's at 325 dead. bounty now. Looks like a wolf just got killed in the last couple seconds. He's gotten a lot of money, but he's not really anywhere near the 500 mark as expected. Um, but yeah, going for that golden gate is also a way to get a lot of money. Yeah, I think all you need is uh, 350. From sheep and he has let's see five he has 20 more from sheep if he can get one more sheep besides the four that are here and then he kills the two boars oh, the two in the boars, late game yeah. he gets exactly 500 which would be lovely mm -hmm. for him and i think he can do it but oftentimes as i found in games you get so distracted by people trying to kill you you trying to kill them <laughs> <laughs> that you kind of are Just not little details like that <laughs> yeah. but you're not looking at the boars anymore and Red Panda does get to Feudal at 4.10, which is actually really snappy and fast. Nice timing, actually. Mm. Do you know, Do you know? can you can you get a critical mass where you can kill boars with just scouts in the earlier game, or is it, is it too many? I believe so, yes. I believe so, yes. I Someone said in Twitch chat yesterday, and when are they ever wrong? Twitch chat always knows the best. Four scouts being enough. But another really? day, I asked Twitch chat, I said, can you do it with seven? Twitch chat said no. So, <laughs> if they're always right, then they're not always right. Yeah. It's a it's a strange one because normally you could say, oh, well, they could be microing 
there are scouts around and, and that kind of thing, but the boar will reset if you micro too far away from it. Yes. And it will get its hit points back, so it's hard to pull off. So, um, I'd be more inclined, I haven't, I haven't actually tried, but I'd be more inclined to guess that seven or more would be necessary just from having... I think so. I mean, seen boars take out entire armies of archers single handedly <laughs> before. There's actually a wolf still on the map here as well, and it's being, uh, it's following Pig's scouts right now. Can he actually kill that wolf before it gets back to Pig's base? He's trying for it. Oh! Who got it? Someone got it. I'm not sure who got the last hit, though. We need to see Panda's bounty. If it's 340, let's see. If it's 340, then he didn't get all it. You, all you MOBA players, here you go. There's some last hitting for you. There's some last hitting in this game. I want to see non hot's last hitting. Yeah, well, there's a little bit. Oh, 390. He probably got the wolf. I want to say. I think he got the wolf. Yeah. So he's really close he's at to 330 it. 30 something before. Nice. So that means, yeah, if he gets, I think he might be out of sheep. But definitely the two boars are a way to uh, finish that off now. Hmm. Wooden fortress castle. Case... Reallocation to the front of his base to provide vision and defenses. Uh, what is that building? Is that an archery range? I'm trying to figure that out myself. Maybe he went for um, a stable for some early knights. I think it was actually a stable for Red Panda. So, just again, the meta, start your castle age timing at 7.30. Oh, it's an archery range. Okay. Archers. Yep. Um, maybe the option to make archers, because he has the wood anyway, and then say, like, yeah, I'm going horse archers, but now I've got an option. I'm removing that 30-second delay of making an, a range reactively should it become necessary. Hmm. Mm, yeah, perhaps. It looks like both players are uh, trying to fight for these deer carcasses now. They've both gotten professional scouts. We've got scouts chasing scouts, trying to dodge scouts, going for deer that are going for deer. Um, and uh, I'm not sure who's gotten more deer carcasses at this point. Um, I feel like Red Panda had more scouts out earlier, which is yeah. obviously going to be likely the case for the Roost player. But uh, yeah, it looks like he's actually used that school of cavalry to get some extra scouts out as well. Not quite seven, but he's gotten three or four, I believe, and is contesting the deer carcasses and um, and uh, contesting that wolf earlier as well. Doing a really good job of being active in trying to beat the roost player at his own game. And just now we're seeing a couple knights out on the map. We haven't really seen uh, a lot of knights out. And um, here, I mean, because they can't really catch up to the scouts. So it's a nice job. I think it's I think this is a good strategic decision by Pig. We'll see. If he can put some harassment down now, though, Red Panda does have one outpost next to his base, um, which is there for the extra lumber boost, but also there for defenses. Mm -hmm. And um, building the Abbey of the Trinity now, getting for that Castle Age landmark, and he is going to be trying to get those relics very quickly, more than likely. So we have three stables ready for Pig, as well as getting wow. ranged armor upgrade. What I think this is, Mole Trap. It's a new emergent tactic, and I see. I think we've seen it from Marine Lord, and the question is, is Pig going to do that? Mass mm. Horsemen. Now, Horsemen have a... Mm. It, could be, it could be Mass Knights. Horsemen have 182 movement speed, 1.82 tiles per second, I believe. That is uh, a little faster than Horse Archers, which are maybe like 160. Not really fast enough to crush them. You'll maybe do a bit of damage as they try to run away. So I find it an interesting move. It could be knights, could be horsemen, it could be a mixture of both. He's now getting scouting info that it is in fact triple archery range. So it's going to be 100% pre predictable that there's going to be horse archers. No, 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 never mind. Double archery Two range. Two ranges and a barracks. Huh. I never see that. Usually it's the full reliance on horse archers. And maybe this is him having faced horsemen and finding it actually difficult. Yeah, he might have scouted those um, triple um, uh, stables. And in addition to the School of Cavalry, so he's actually producing uh, out of more, essentially more than four stables worth of units, uh, potentially, and says, all right, well, I need, I'm going to need some spears to deal with this because there's going to be a lot of horses coming my way. And actually, maybe I, I misspoke. I thought that uh, uh, Blacksmith was a, was a third one. So when you said three, you were including the School of Cavalry. My mistake. But either way, it's going to be mostly horsemen coming out, and um, a horsemen or, or cavalry of some kind. And he might be just saying, okay, well, even if I'm going for a horseman on my own, having some spears around is going to be good. At, at the very least, it's going to force back, um, force him to retreat away from my spears. I'll be able to get more kiting on him or something like that. Um, do you think, 
I mean, I guess, is he thinking of going horse archers in this instance? It might be, yeah, okay, so he's got two already. To answer your question, yes. But the mm. meta is four, four archery ranges with mass horse archers, and then scouts mm. to buffer. What we're seeing is double archery range and double barracks. So it's totally unexpected that he's going for some spears. Oh, yeah. yeah, double barracks. So I don't know exactly what he's looking to plan with that. We've got a blacksmith uh, coming out as well. Warrior monks are probably even now retrieving relics. Three of them on the left side, one at the bottom, and there's one in the middle. But we've got an aggressive overture by Pig. Pig is attacking. Oh, nice. He's coming in here, trying to do some damage, but there are enemy units there. He's actually got some spears already. Whoa! Oh, this is going to do much. Oh, but the other side, he forces the army to get stuck in a bottleneck next to his town center. Comes in from the other side as well. Pig repeating the tactics that were victorious for him against Trump by harassing those villagers. Coming from the other side as well. A little bit of a quicker reaction here by Red Panda. He's able to dodge most of the shots and save most of his villagers. But again, these knights are so heavily armored, they're not going to care too much. They're doing battle up underneath the town center. There's actually not a lot of villagers in there, so they're not even taking too many hits there. And he's going to go ahead and do some damage, trade some kills, and run out with um, a few knights lost, but some still alive, and they're going to be able to regen as well. So, not a bad attack, but I think he might have taken a little bit more damage from those spearmen than he than he wanted to. It was, I mean, he might not have even realized how many spearmen were there in that, in that clumped melee in between the buildings. It was hard to see what was going on. And uh, Pig losing some knights there. Yep, he did lose some knights, but you want to know the real story here? Well, there's actually a few stories. Uh, what you said is super real as well. <laughs> uh, big, no castle age, right? So mm. he's on a timing of relic and sacred site loss. At the same time, though, he's at 39 villagers 30 seconds ago against 29. Of course, French mm. have quicker villager production, even though they need to spend for it as well. Yeah. But normally, you wouldn't expect a 10 villager lead. You would expect maybe by now, yeah, I want to say a 4 villager lead. So he killed 6 villagers in that attack. That matters, mm. but it doesn't measure up to the relics he's about to lose. So that looked pretty good. He killed army, he killed villagers, but now he's losing relics. One already in the bank, maybe a second and a third being brought back even now. Every relic is worth 2.5 villagers. Hmm. Very nice, and he's going to go ahead and get that second relic in there. Immediately, shift clicked out to go to the third relic, probably at the top of the map, or maybe on the side on the west. And, I mean, I really like this composition, actually. Going for the uh, spearmen and the horse archers seems to be a good... I mean, it, it might be a reaction to saying, okay, well, I know Pig's going all cavalry. He's getting knights because he's French. Um, you know, horse archers are not going to do very well. Uh, in, in putting out damage against knights that have extra armor and can regen up. So getting some spears to actually be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and protect his horse archers from the knights charging on them makes good sense. And it seems to be working out well in forum so far. Pig coming in to try and do some more harassment. Not really able to accomplish much this time, though. Um, and I feel like this game is going to run away. Like, Pig does have an, uh, a villager count advantage, but with these this Castle Age tech and with the relics, I feel like Pig might need to do more damage pretty soon or he's going to end up falling behind later in the game look at this tr this see there we go if he had a scout with his knights they would yeah. have seen that running through and he would have been able to go off and kill that but instead red panda is going to score a third relic in his uh landmark so mate i think that's nice a there. fourth i think that's the fourth, fourth one yep oh wow and the the abbey of trinity can only fit three but the monastery, right. as we can see now, has a fourth. That's 400 gold per minute, and that's worth 10 villagers, easily making yeah. up for the deficit that he had. And that's a renewable resource. It's really uh, good recycling. That gold never runs out. But he's not, Lotto, he doesn't know. Not he's losing this time, no. Oh, no. He's, he's not retreating. He's, he's done such a good job of retreating him every time until this time he loses every single Whoa. villager that was harvesting lumber. About 10 kills there. And this, he's got that last relic. In his hands, uh, it looks like. So there's no more relics left on the map. He's actually going to have all five relics. But losing ten villagers to get one more relic in the bank is not uh, the best trade, necessarily. No, um, it isn't. Does he actually have... I can't see... Oh, yeah, he does. Yeah, so he's going to go ahead and put that in the in the, uh, in the the building. So now he has all five relics generating gold right now. That's a pretty substantial income. Looks like he's now going on the counterattack. The arduous and tedious task of relic collection... 
and simultaneous defense is over for him. He feels like he should mm -hmm. bring about his army to bear now to attack. He's in the middle of the map, but look at the red on the minimap. Pick, a strategical mastermind, has been out of the competition circuit for a bit. We lassoed him, joined him back, and here he is. <laughs> and his girlfriend or wife, Dot, must now be watching as well, nervous, as nervous as he is. A caster, a streamer, now a competitor again, and an ex-competitor before. Pig is with units all over the map. Royal Knights in the north, in the east, in the west. And now attacking the Spears. Oh, man. And Royal Knights, when they outnumber the Spears and they have their upgrades, can actually take out Spearmen. And they are going to do that, completely obliterating the Spear count on the side. He's doing a little bit of battle with these Horse Archers on the right side, though. There are some Warrior Monks in battle as well, which are going to buff the nearby enemies when they make an attack. But he's cleared up all of the infantry except for a few. Looks like he is going to retreat, though. He did lose several knights there. Probably more than he would have wanted to. But um, he's taken some trades and hoping that he can still win out. He does now have a scout with that army, by the way. Um, so that's going to be to his advantage in those secret force that we was just fighting nearby. Um, but just mass horse archers right now with a couple spearmen left versus mass knights. It's going to be positional play that's going to determine who wins. But if it's a straight-up battle... The knights get a charge attack down on there, and he doesn't kite very well. Pig could take this out, but he's going in for the harassment onto the economy. Looks no. like Pig doesn't have quite a lot of villagers there, and he's going to go for the counterattack against Red Panda's villagers as well, which have already been decimated. Spears, though. Spears are there for the defense. These are oh, veteran they are. spearmen. They're actually one technology higher than the knights. Again, though, Red Panda doesn't immediately notice, loses several villagers, and if Pig pulls back his knights... He should be able to have a cost efficient trade. These veteran spears, though, kill one, two knights. That's expensive. That's very expensive. Yeah. Very expensive indeed. And yeah, it's kind of starting to hurt Pig that he still is at this pretty late stage in the game, still on the second age. He needs to, I think, probably think about if there's a way that he can get up to Castle so he can upgrade those knights so they're yeah. on even tech, as you mentioned, with the spearmen um, and start getting out some higher tech units of his own. Um, so I guess I'm thinking like. Oh, bit of an engagement here. The knights are coming in for a surround onto the horse archers. They're trying to kite around, but they're actually being microed in between the knights, taking extra damage, just kind of running straight by the knights. But it looks like there might be too many of them with the spearmen there as well. And that's what he was doing, ladies and gentlemen. He was actually microing the horse archers to bait the knights into the spear fire so the knights could not dodge the spears and go in after the horse archers at the same time. And in the process, he completely annihilates absolutely annihilates pig's army pig has only a few knights left and now these horse archers have nothing absolutely nothing that can stop them from going to every single point of resource gathering picking off any spear villagers that think that they have the gall to get some income for pig and with those spears there there's not a lot he can do if he gets out a few more horses to deal with this and he's even going for a ram to ram home the victory and start taking out the buildings as well this is turned very far south very quickly for pig in the last uh, minute or so yeah and even in probably losing he showed such genius and acumen in the control of his oh, army sure. he, it's a big if but if those knights had been castle age knights tier three knights things might have looked different but that's a big if that costs 1800 resources to go up to the next age and he never ever made enough money bank in order to be able to afford that red panda survived every maneuver lost villagers but marshaled enough army and i find it smart that he's adding spears to his army again adding yeah. that complexity that is different from just massing horse archers herder and now he can make rams as well and he's going for the kill yeah he's even making another ram here um and i mean Pig is not responding to this ram, not because he doesn't realize that it's a threat, but because he doesn't really have anything to respond with at this point. Um, you can see he's trying to put out some archers. I mean, at this stage in the game, almost 20 minutes in the game, making an archery range and desperately trying to get out a half a dozen archers right now in order to deal with these spears is just, I mean, archers can be more cost effective against horse archers, but when you're outnumbered, the horse archers are going to win. They're, you know, might be about even damage, but they're going to have a lot more hit points. And his uh, school of cavalry goes down two, two rams now, marching, rolling into that first town center. And, I mean, a pig just, if he had a bunch of knights still, he could run in and, and kill off those rams pretty quickly. But right now, I don't 
think he really has anything to 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 shut these down. Here we come, the villagers, the lastest villagers. Villagers do pretty good damage against rams. But not if they're dead to horse archers, ladies and gentlemen. And a third ram is going to come in here. He's surrounding the town center with horse archers to make sure there's no place where the villagers can get any damage done. Looks like they are going to pop out on the opposite side and do some damage to the rams. A couple knights coming in here, but it's not going to be enough. And seeing the inevitable, he GG's. And we are going to a third 2v2 decider match for the finals Hell in yeah. this Castle Cup. This is absolutely amazing and so well played by red panda yeah look at all those villager kills that pigs perpetrated against his opponent yeah there were recoveries pig actually ceased villager production this is almost unheard of you know technically if he kept making villagers and i think he should he would have almost doubled his opponent's villager count though not his income mm. but as it stands red panda recovered 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 and recovered again. Mm -hmm. Big knew what he was doing. He knew it was always going to be a tough battle against Red Panda. His elo, a little bit lower. His experience, shining though. And he was here to all in, basically. This is something yeah. that is very popular in StarCraft. Stopping worker count production and channeling everything into fatal and lethal strikes. But in age, I'm not sure that it should be done yet. He was trying to make the argument that it can be, and I guess he was pretty close. He did a lot of good damage, but without Ram Siege Engineering, he couldn't really finish it off, even capitalize on that advantage. I think this might have worked, if not for two barrack spear production. I think Red Panda responding to what he saw, he says, mm. okay, that's a bunch of stables. I'm going to get some spears in response and eventually deal with the knights. Um, I feel like that might have saved him from Calamity because Pick was doing some damage with his knights. I think you're right. If the timing that that came against against four archery range horse archers with that kind of overwhelming pincer movement and with without the spears to brace for the attack and do the bonus damage, without the space even to maneuver for the horse archers as he wouldn't want to leave all his villagers undefended. The 20 that don't fit in the town center, the eight that don't fit in the tower, he was left with 40 villagers every villager and horse archer would have died against an attack like that without spears so big kudos to red panda for getting that scouting info like you said and preparing the spears from two racks yeah yeah i mean this is uh more and more we're seeing that this is a game where you really really to be successful at the highest ability level you need to be adaptive and we've heard that in the interviews so far with our winners of the matches thus far and we're seeing it here in this game that being adaptive is what saved the series for Bonjois because that was an elimination potential for Bonjois if he had lost, if Red Panda has lost that game. And they still would have taken second, obviously, but now they're forcing the third game and uh, a chance at continuing on to win that third game and get the first place prize. It's going to come down to the 2v2 once again. Um, but what an amazing game that was. Uh, really, really cool to see things going back and forth. Really cool to see both players adapting their strategies. Obviously, Red Panda adapting a little bit more uh, in certain ways, but um, Pig really keeping track of things as well. And here we're seeing some of the scout shenanigans that happened early on. This was the this is where we started to think, okay, I think Pig might be at an advantage in this game because he killed a lot of villagers. Uh, in this instance, I would say the most, and a couple other times as well. And th this juxtaposition is perfect. The villagers dying, and the monk bringing home the relic. It's like... The heat pig accomplishing damage but also missing out on the objectives in the same screen <laughs> yeah exactly and you know th this spear night fight it was insane how many those spears actually killed like i really didn't expect it i've seen oh, yeah. so many night massacres of spearmen and this is super cost efficient for red panda and it, it, it's the age difference between the two mm -hmm. and by that i mean castle versus feudal really cool moves though right. by pig i've rarely seen players be that good at 360 surrounds with their units. Yeah, because... for sure. And, um, you know, he did try to take the sacred sites a little bit as well. And at least Pig was able to kind of shut that down and make sure it wasn't uh, here. And actually here we're going to see Red Panda's moment of victory. You can see him microing uh, his horse archers more numerous and even continuing to produce units, even though his victory is pretty much assured. Looking around the map to look at objectives. Okay. 
giving himself some uh, some kudos there for the win. And uh, well deserved indeed. Very, very big awesome. Tapping out there. Yeah, big tapping out. And Petit Drogo saved this though prematurely with that first victory. So they will get a chance to play two on two. And this is cool because both of these teams have won their only two on two battle so far. Petit Drogo True. and Big won with the early archer and knight attack. Honor and Red Panda had a knuckle duster of a game against Nili and Jim Rising on Mongolian Heights with that river, with the fish boom, uh, with basically all kinds of things. We saw bombards, elephants, and whatnot. The final map, though, is going to be Altai, the two mountain ranges hemming in the players. And I wonder how it'll look like in 2 on 2, Moltron. Yeah, I mean, most of the maps, they kind of have the same general features when you expand them into a larger version. Um, with uh, Altai, it ends up being a wider valley, but the outskirts around the map are actually wider as well. So, um, okay. you know, if you try and wall off those edges and try and focus the battle in the middle, it takes a little bit more. Not significantly, but proportionally. So, you know, if if the if the edges are, you know, 10% of the small map, they're going to be still 10% of the medium map or whatever. Or actually, micro to small, I guess, is the conversion. Yeah, micro to small. Yeah, so, right. But it's going to have generally the same features, but as usual... With a 2v2 map, it tends to mess with the objectives and the locations of things a little bit more. You basically have um, the valley and you have two teams on basically next to each mountain range on one side of the valley and, and the other two on the other side of the valley, at the other end of the valley. So it's still going to be one sort of central lane where both players might be meeting in the middle for that middle site. Yeah, exactly. And... Well, that's going to be uh, super interesting. $2,500 on the line, all coming down to a single two-on-two -two mall trap. All games were played. We've gone the distance. Let's see what they have prepared for us here. They must even now be furiously discussing some of the strategies that they are, are looking to use in this final match. Very, very yeah. interesting. We have Chinese and French against Delhi and Rus. Yeah, I mean, because... They've already shown what they do on a 2v2 map, right? So it's like, is a knight with Imperial overseen archers going to work again if your opponents saw you do that and they yeah. know it's a possibility, right? And it's probably a good strategy on this map, actually, um, but it uh, might be something that they're going to be more on the lookout for. Um, I think, you know, we've talked with both of these sets of players in their winner interviews and I think we probably are going to see both of them go for more um, aggression. I don't think we're going to see any sort of fast expansion or econ builds coming out of them just yet, uh, or at this at, in the early game, I mean. Um, and so, you know, we might just see a, a feudal age slugfest or, or something like that. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how this goes out. But again, the story of a lot of these matches has been adaptation. And so I think it's also going to be down to scouting each other, figuring out what the other one is doing, figuring out what the other two are doing, actually, not the other one, and adapting to that as a pair. Yeah, I'm, I'm super curious to see what's going <laughs> to... I thought you would have eaten that in the break by now. <laughs> nice pair. Not yet, not yet. I'm saving it. It's a victory pair. We still yeah. haven't figured out who the who the actual ultimate best pair is, right? <laughs> still got one pairing, pair versus pair left. So what are we going to see? Will we see the first Trugenu from Petit Drogo, those repeater crossbows, four damage and three burst fires? Would that work well into the would-be horse archers from Red Panda? Uh, is Honor going to go feudally aggressive as a Delhi player? Will the Bandwa team work together to make wall-offs for sacred site occupation to provide a defensive point? Because Delhi, yeah. usually not the best rush faction. They have delays. Uh, Delhi delay. They have delays on all of their blacksmith upgrades. So they are slow at making rams. They can make spears, but those are bugged and do not work properly into cavalry. They don't have the brace that stops the charge and roots enemy cavalry. So they just have normal units. So to see Delhi get feudally aggressive would be very interesting indeed. Horsemen, kind of bad. Spears are bugged for them. So Delhi can only make archers. But they have nothing that makes them special, these archers, as Delhi. Except yeah. one thing, Moltra. The Tower of Victory. 
<laughs> if he goes for the landmark, the Tower of Victory, instead of for the sacred, the scholar one, he can get about, this is the tool, what the yeah. tooltip says, about 15% attack speed. It's more like 10. 10% attack speed for all of the archers he makes in its vicinity. Are we going to see a Delhi Tower of Victory rush? That's what I want to see. Yeah, you know, and it's interesting because I believe, I'm not sure about this, but I believe that would apply, would that apply, oh, well, maybe I'll ask this, I'll ask this. Would that apply to allied units? No. Would they get the buff as well? No. No, I just tested it a week ago. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, um, Sadly, because, you know, no. I... I think you were talking in a, in, a, in a stream recently about that, how sometimes there might be uh, landmarks that are bad in a 1v1, but are going to be good in a 2v2 uh, or, or a higher team game. Actually, it might have been the devs that were talking about in their dev talk about how they were defending, you know, oh, this needs to be buffed. And like, well, no, it's not a landmark for 1v1. It's a 4v1 landmark. That's why it doesn't need to be buffed, hmm. etc. Yeah, so I guess. we might see something like that um, come into play. And, um, you know, his... Uh, Sacred Sight Rush didn't work very well because the walls were not there in time. They were not strong enough. But guess who has the best feudal walls? It's the Roos. Well, so, technically, you know, maybe they... technically not the best because you can make stone wall every save. Oh, okay. You're right. Fair enough. The best Dark who Age has the walls. Best, yes. The best Dark Age walls. Yes. Yes. Indeed. True. Double health. Regardless. Yeah. Either way, you know, we might see, again, that teamwork play into it. Um, but we saw teamwork play into Petit Drogo and Pigs win earlier as well. So... Let's find out. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The final game, the deciding match of the Castle Cup. Petit Drogo and Pig versus Honor and Red Panda. And we are going to have the valley going from the southwest to the northeast. And the Bonjois team will be situated at the bottom left of the map. The Petit Drogo and Pig team will be at the top right of the map. We're getting here underway, and we're going to find out very soon which team will finally be victorious and take home the big money i'm very curious to see what's gonna happen we see drogo scout in the center likewise i believe is red panda everyone fighting for the sheep in the middle of the map there's lots of deer camps here mm. it's both easier to get many deer as red panda but it's also harder because there's more people trying to do denials we have red panda scout here against petit drogo scout uh, they're they're hitting each other trying to deny deer by hitting yeah. each other i think that usually on this map there's one deer camp next to each spawn and then there's one extra per player and i think that's the same thing i think there's gonna be six if i'm counting so there's gonna be still one deer camp next to every player's spawn and then a couple others on the map if i remember correctly it's Still actually a weird sites, uneven number. It's seven total. So Oh, is it really? Uh oh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. No, actually, I think you're right. Yeah, it's eight total. <laughs> well played. <laughs> you're quite okay. right. Still the three sacred sites though. Um kind of dividing the map in half on this, you know, one in the center and two on the sides of the mountains. And we do have some interesting place gaps in the mountains. Um the gaps are uh very close to the uh, to honors. Uh, base on one side and very close to Petit Drogo's base on the other side. So there's kind of like each team kind of has a little bit of a favor towards one of the lanes going around the outside of the map. But True. who knows if any of that will matter in uh, well, the uh, mid or late game. It might. If you look at where Honor, the yellow player in the south side, is positioned, he's got a direct route to the, to the east side sacred side. Mm. If Big mm -hmm. wants to contest him for it, it's all the way around the mountain range. And True. that's going to take him a little bit longer. So it is fascinating. And there's a little thoroughfare here in the mountain pass about one. Yeah, about one house wide that you could pass through. Does it go all the way over, though? I didn't yeah. think it did. Does it? Okay. I, I do believe it does. I think it's exactly wide enough for a unit to pass through as Red mm. Panda will be the first to be able to go for his feudal age landmark. It's going to be the Golden Gate. Uh, the alternative is the Kremlin. Acts as a wooden fortress, aka a wood generation buffer, as well as a defensive outpost. What is this? School of Cavalry. Okay, expected. Then mm -hmm. Honor now as Delhi. Is he gonna go for <laughs> the Tower of Victory? No. Don't I mean, think. it's in the name. It's called the Tower of Victory. It's what you get <laughs> if you want victory, right? Makes total sense. But bonus attack speed archers. It's two on two. 
Okay, so True. castle, castle, True. and stick. You're saying which castle age tech? No, I'm just saying uh, he's probably going to play for castle age because oh, okay. Anna just reasoned out if you're not going for Tower of Victory, Delhi to be aggressive in feudal seems tough. Yeah. Now, um, there are more animals on the map because it's a bigger map. There are yeah. more deer camps, so it might be a little bit easier for Red Panda to go ahead and actually get up there. He's already over 300. That's that a lot. Bounty. And... You know what would be fun, actually, if you could, I mean, if you should let your opponent come over to your town center and kill your sheep. I mean, your ally would come over and kill your sheep. Oh, your town center. yeah. So he could actually just like send a scout over or, or a, a villager over and just knock out all my sheep next to my town center so I can True. eat them and get some extra bounty out of that. And, and that would make him uh, able to get up towards that 500 pretty oh. easily. And what, uh, what else can happen is that honor lures the wolves wolves will chase you across the map so long as you don't travel for too far away at full speed you, you sometimes wait to allow them oh. to catch up in line of sight so you can easily tether back two three four wolves ah. and run them into your allies town center into into your, your allies your town center very cool idea yeah very interesting um don't know if they're doing that right now but um some cool ideas to think about um but yeah there's more sheep on the map as well just in general so that's something that makes it a, an option and he's actually almost up at 400 already so and anyway, we are seeing everyone reach age two petite drogo's lagging a tiny bit behind but he's going to be finishing up his feudal age tech very soon i imagine as well and um so far no doesn't look like too much early aggression we don't see a lot of production buildings down barracks or archery ranges at the moment, so we might actually see a bit of an econ game here. It does indeed seem so, and it, I've seen pretty much a stable in every single base, so everyone's going for professional oh. scouts technology, except Honor. There's those double archer ranges. Double range this time, not going for a range in a rack that he did in the one-on-one, -on -one. so he's going with the archers, sadly, without the amazing benefits of Tower of Victory. <laughs> Big mistake there. But he's going to be able to use them to do walls. Now, archers do cost a lot of wood. So he will need a lot of wood for archers. He needed a lot of wood for the rangers. Then he'll need wood for the palisade walls if he goes for a defensive sacred site control game. Might not be that at all. He might just go for a big archer attack, protect the carcasses, maybe even attack. We'll see. Mm -hmm. And so we're probably going to see Red Panda go for the... Actually, look, he's built a cabin over near some deer actually but i expect he'll go for the normal roost strategy getting some scouts out getting the um professional scouts upgrade i think we saw that earlier yeah there it is just finishing up actually no we've got um petite drogo uh selected right now so petite drogo went for the professional scouts upgrade as well yep. we're gonna see a bit of a deer fight it looks like and we see early knights coming out here for red panda he oh. ha hadn't gone Wait, for he hasn't gotten it Oh. Red Panda has not gotten professional scouts. Only Red... Petit Drogo has it. Uh, okay. Maybe because of the fact that this is that he, two of the the hunts are next to your opponent's bases, he didn't want to risk it. Maybe even well... though he went in and yoinked them before. So Honor can't do professional scouts. He doesn't have. Well, actually, he can. He gets it for free, but he's not electing to go for it. So mm. neither of them going for deer retrieval techniques. Um... So Petit Drogo gets all the deer. He gets all the deer as Chinese, that's funny, into Rus and, and French. You've got Pig, what looks like he's going for Castle Age. He wants to make good on his lack of castle from his one-on-one -on -one game just now. Mm. Honor is pumping out archers secretly, we may add. A red panda mm. is pumping out uh, early knights. That has been revealed, though. This is unusual for Rus to have early knights now, and it is a direct prevention of being able to go castle age so it looks like it should be obvious now mass early knights mass archers from team bonjoa how will the chinese and the french petit drogo and pig defend against it they've got their own knights double stable essentially counts as 2.4 stables because of the school of cavalry in terms of production speed then what will uh, our Chinese player, Petit Drogo, go for it. It looks like he's garnering resources to once again go for Castle Age. But will he get that space? Bit of an oversight there um, with uh, a Pig not actually killing the deer near his own base. So yeah. Red Panda actually kill him with the, with his knights. 
So he's actually, he might be close to 500 at this point, killing a whole few more deer. But we do see this aggression that you mentioned coming in here. Early knights backed up by archers. And we're going to have against royal knights, which are another form of early knights. And is uh, Petit Drogo going to be able to provide what? the support here? Barbican of the... Oh, sorry, wait. Which one? Uh, no, yeah, he's, he's, yeah Imperial. He's getting so he's going to get to the Chugnu, I think, to try and combat the archers. But the gold income for Pig had been disrupted. He lost a villager. He's got all of his mm. deer in a place that is now untenable to defend. Oh, no. He put them next to the mill instead of the town center. As you would for supervision and generation bonus yeah. food. But still, we, we're in that situation that Pig Petit Drogo inflicted on Hazu and Trump. The in-between sweet spot. Now, though, with one archery range with supervision, we're going to have Shugenu production from uh, from our player here. Um, yeah, but they're expensive. They cost gold, food, and wood. 20 food, 20 wood, 30 gold, I believe. Something like that, yeah. There, they, there's a bunch, a little bit of everything, uh, but it adds up. Um, it looks like the threat has been kind of shut down for now. Now, by the way, once the deer have been dropped off, you could pick them up again. So he could actually bring a few of those deer to his town True. center as a backup location, theoretically. But you're exactly right. If he's able to oversee the mill, he gets more da more oh. out of it. And actually, look at this. Honor has slaughtered all of the deer harvesters there because they are not under the town center. And it looks like they kind of stood there and took it as well. These archers are just getting free hit. Well, they're free hits on the mill, which doesn't matter right now. But um, surprised to see not really a lot of reaction to that at the moment. Um, a little bit of skirmishing between knights going on in the middle. Pig does have a little bit of production advantage there. He has a few more knights as well. Petit Drogo running around with his, those scouts in addition. So it's a it's just a kind of a crazy melee. But there's the Chugnu. They're in play. He has a little bit less than there are archers, but they're going to be doing, able to output more damage in a straight-up fight. Uh, this is uh, a counterattack once again by Pig. Not meeting that much uh defenses actually the children are starting to fire away at scouts and archers it looks like petit drogo and pig are fighting back massive clash of the cavalry lance against lance sword against sword and it looks like pig's cavalry will be triumphant for now there's a scholar sacred side attempt taken down by petit drogo's scouts once again yeah, and uh, keeping in mind that uh, these Chugnu are going to be very good against enemy scouts. I'm sorry, enemy, well, enemy scouts and enemy archers. They're going to do almost nothing to knights, though. The armor is going to be blocked because the burst attack is a low amount in a burst. But the low amount means none of those attacks are going to be breaking through the armor. So exactly. he's going to have to micro them well to make sure his Chugnu don't die and that they're only hitting the targets that they're effective against. Otherwise, they're just going to be well ineffective i guess sacred site being taken down here um on one side of the map and honor taking the sacred site on the other side of the map so it looks like or is he taking both of them um but yeah. either way bonjoa team is going to have control of two of the three sites in a moment and just to also kind of talk about the chugunu math chugunu attacks slightly faster than archers and they attack three times for four five if upgraded uh, early knights have three armor. That means one damage will penetrate, but times three, so it's three. An archer mm. would do uh, would do five damage, so two. That's still one more for a Tsuganu. And finally, Tsuganu attacks faster. So uh, at the end of the day, Tsuganu will still do 60% more damage to an archer, uh, to, a, to a knight, than an archer, but they still suck at it. Like in general, they <laughs> suck at it, but they're 60% yeah. better than an archer, uh, assuming normal upgrades. Yeah, I, I mentioned the Chuk knew we're going to be pretty ineffective against the knights. Well, normal archers are also garbage against other knights. Yeah. So either way, you're going to try to micro your army around so that you're... I mean, you're, the archers are basically going to be going after each other. If your opponent only has... Oh, here he's going in for some skirmish, trying to pick off some units. He's going to lose a knight, maybe two. Only gets one villager there. But um, the archers kind of have their own battle. The knights have their own battle between them. If you can get your knights on top of their archers, obviously it's going to be good. But um, basically, you, you the, the archers can kill a knight if you have an overwhelming mass of them. And so that's why they're still a bit of a threat, but not as much of one if there's knights in front of you. Yeah, exactly. I think that's very well described and why Honor still kind of has his defensive advantage together with the town center and having... Uh, yeah, having those archers in. So, uh, scouts coming in together with royal knights. A clash ensues. There's lots of villages here. Big and oh. uh, big and Petit Drogo are trying to kill as many villagers as they can. I see one going down too. It's kind of 
wonky to try to take down uh, that many, but they get a good number, about four or five or so. It's Petit Drogo that under this heavy duress of the wow. double attack manages to finally clinch Castle Age. This is huge. I want to say a mole trap in all the games we casted so far today. It has been rare that the defensive player has reached Castle Age before the attacking player. Mm. Yeah, because usually when you're putting pressure on your opponent, that pressure is duress that keeps them producing units to defend instead of saving up to go for, um, uh, you know, the tech up. And I just want to point out, I think it's kind of funny that these scouts are running around with the oh. knights doing battle with deer on their back. And, oh, these villagers have just finished putting up a wall, but that's going to be the last thing they ever do. And now he is going to get oh. these deer, but he's trapped in a corner. He can't get out. The archers are coming in. They've got him pinned, and there's not enough knights to do battle with all those archers, especially with... The early knight's there as well, and it looks like he's going to try and go down on there, but nice kiting by honor. He's going to do so much damage. <laughs> all these knights are going to get slaughtered. And the petite Trogo says, I'm out of here. I'm getting out with these deer. You do battle with the archers, but every volley is picking off a, de uh, <laughs> picking off a deer, picking off a scout and making it drop the deer. Honor reaching the castle age as well. So now each team has one age three and one age two player. And just as I say that, Red Panda reaches it as well, leaving Pig as the only person who has not quite gotten up there. He's building, I believe, his age three landmark uh, to catch up. And so all players kind of getting to the castle age around the same time. But um, it seems like Petit Drogo was significantly ahead. What is he going to do with that advantage, though? He's got the clock tower. I didn't see if he's observing it to put out those siege units or not, though. Well, I didn't see that either, and I think we can assume it's probably not happening yet. Though nests of bees will be good into archers, they also have to be cognizant of the fact that both enemy players have already reached Castle Age. So many times, mm -hmm. knights are all possibilities, and he needs to wonder, are nests of bees the correct call? Will there be transitions? Meantime, Pig has also gone up to Castle Age. At least he's working on it. Four villagers are currently building the uh guild hall the guild hall yes <laughs> and he'll get to castle h himself for the first time in this best of three as he stayed feudal in the one-on-one -on -one with red panda yeah yeah true this is an interesting situation look at this wall being put up by <laughs> honor and what is that building there actually i'm town not center. sure what that is oh it's town center okay that makes sense so yeah building the wall in the town center and they're kind of trying to control that center lane you can see there's already a wall on the southern half as well Lots of walls being put up by all the different factions here, actually. So Petit Drogo controlling the top of the map and the area above that pass. And basically right now, the only place where you can easily go is through the middle for both, for all the players, I should say. There's still some lanes around the outside, but there's been walls put up all over the place. Both teams trying to focus things in onto just kind of controlling the middle. But again, um, we still have the site control at the uh, top of the map for uh, Red Panda. It looks like he's lost control of this southern site, but it's hard for me to tell. I don't... Yeah, uh, let's see. Only one side is in control right now for Bandwa, yeah. the left side. Mid and, and, and right side have been denied. Lo I love these pretty colors, man. Like, really nice contrast <laughs> on all these uh, units. We don't usually see yeah. green in uh, in one on one there is a nest of bees here they're looking like they're about to get a monster hit on the archers but honor responds and ends up dodging the nest of bees retargets and retargets again it keeps trying to oh my god there is the first shot finally on the archers only lands on a few of them they are going to be able to do some damage back the chukmi are actually fighting against the infantry instead of the enemy archers so honors archers getting a little bit more value there however there are some knights coming in from the side sick you come back them um, oh, Pig going for some... Pig has been so consistent in this entire tournament with the harassment with the Knights going in and dealing damage when his opponent is distracted. There's all kinds of cavalry doing battle in the middle. In the meantime, Honor's Archer's putting out significant damage per second onto those, but it looks like he's forced to fall back. There's too many horses there for him to deal with. And pa Red Panda actually falling back a little bit too far, leaving Honor's Archer's vulnerable. A few of them going down, the rest of them having to run away, but he is going to be able to fall back to this town center as a defensive point. I don't feel like Petit Drogo and Pig are going to be able to push too far into this. Will they decide to pursue their advantage or will they turn back? It looks like they are going to turn back. I think wisely so. Um, let's see if that Nesta Bees can get one last shot over the fence there. Uh, we're not going to see it, but I think he's probably going to dodge it. 
But um, yeah, one nest of bees. That one nest of bees was like was setting up, targeting, and then losing focus, and then moving and setting up and targeting. Couldn't quite get the damage out that they needed from that to yeah. to really deal with that mass of archers that Honor has uh, has built up. Dude, this has been such a fun game. I feel like this is the best two on two yet. It's so back and forth. And it's really hard to tell who's going to win. We've got the Chugunu and Petit Drogo is kind of carrying here. It makes sense. He wasn't the one that got attacked as hard as right. Pig. Uh, all in Castaway's landmark. We've got Nestopis, Chugunu and the own knights. And for the first time, we have Sacred Side Control separated between the teams. We've got the middle side being taken by Pig and Petit Drogo. They're actually bursting through the Palisade walls. We can now see that 50% ratio for honor of that range ball is actually uh, crossbows, which do bonus damage to heavy. Mm. Heavy is anyone that has uh, good armor. So like knights, men at arms will all take bonus damage from crossbows. So this isn't the pinpricks of archers throwing toothpicks. Right. No, no, this is coming in like a ballista, like a wrecking ball. And you can see the knights yeah. falling, big regret one one. for pig. Yeah, they're going down so quickly. And uh, he's trying to retreat to this wall, but Red Panda's gonna head him off with his own knights. So not a single one of that squad of cavalry is going to be able to escape there. Petit Drogo is going to escape with his own as well, but um, several of Pig's Knights going down. So yeah, you can just see the difference those crossbowmen make. They're actually able to pierce through the armor, do significant damage, and in fact do bonus to bonus damage to yep. units with armor. So taking down those knights very quickly. So now Pig has to decide, am I going to keep going with these knights that I've used all series that have been very effective? Or am I going to have to switch tactics up and try and do something that is not necessarily what the French are known for as we get into, the, I mean, the Castle Age play and potentially even getting into Imperial Age play at some point. Since as you can see, there's pretty high income uh, for gold and food for, for example, Petit Drogo. He's got a lot of money coming in that he could use to age up if he wants to. We finally see the Honda Blades upgrade being started. It's funny. Nice. He forgot about this for five minutes straight to start it. So first of all, that's a D, D minus for timing for, <laughs> for honor there. But on the flip side, he's got so many scholars that it will only take him eight minutes to finish instead of the 22 minutes that it may normally take if you started with about three scholars in the bank. So uh, it's gonna come out, it's gonna do bonus damage for men at arms. In the meantime, let's do a villager call out. Pig has 62 villagers, 74 for Petit Drogo. On the other side, we've got 45 only for Honor, trailing about 20 to 30 vills and 57 for Red Panda. So uh, economically, we see a town center on the far right side for Pig. Petit Drogo mm. is in Song Dynasty. So economically, they're getting very far ahead uh, from that. And in terms of sacred sites, yeah, they're losing out a little bit. And, of course, Honor is not spending any resources on upgrades. Delhi gets everything for free, albeit mm -hmm. slow. So, altogether, it is fairly even, but there's the chance that Chinese and uh, and French from Big Petit Drogo might just be pulling ahead a little bit. But a lot is going to come down to the Battle Micro uh, Mole Trap. Yeah, indeed. And uh, this is not the best place for them to engage in a battle, actually, because we've got this nice little wall. Um, Team Bonjois is kind of hiding in the background there. And actually, they've broken through, Ooh. but it might be a choke point, and that's exactly what they wanted to do, was draw them through that narrow choke point and then engage on them with the entire force of their army on the small and more forces that got through. Team Drogo senses that's what's going on and falls back. They're going to try and use some of their siege equipment now. Obviously, nests of bees are not <laughs> specially made to attack buildings, but they're actually going to do decent damage against buildings, so they're going to try and knock that wall down, make it so that there's a more open engagement to be had there, but I'm not sure if necessarily even an open engagement is what they're looking for. We do have the current resources now, by the way. It looks like Petit Drogo is spending all that money, so he's not actually saving up for Imperial. No one is looking close to Imperial right now, so we're gonna have a big... Whoa. Oh, whoa! Well, what that's the... four relics in there! <laughs> I oh, to say, man! He's got 80% of the relics, but there's seven uh, in 2-on-2, two two, so he's got... <laughs> Wait, Moltra, four out of seven, is that 57%? <laughs> 
uh, approximately 50 for sevens, yeah. Yeah, 57, yeah, 57.14%. So great job for Petit Drogo <laughs> to get that many relics. That's nice gold generation, so rich, starting on this farmland. We have an attack coming out by Banjwa. They managed to muster a few springles. Oh, two more relics here for Red Panda. And then, well, where's the final one? Okay. Uh, so it's four versus three in relics, noted. So Springles have mm. been mustered. Springles need three shots to take down a normal mangonel. I th suspect they may need three shots for a nest of bees as well. 120 damage a pop, nest of bees I think has 300 health. So three is the magic number, but there's five nest of bees. They can wreak havoc on this archer ball. Oh, yeah, for sure. I don't think spring rolls would be good, very good with mustard, by the way, just for the record. Um... <laughs> mustard spring rolls. <laughs> <laughs> he said he was my mustard several spring rolls. Um, hey, anyway, we do have spring rolls. It's a Dutch Sorry, delicacy. spring rolls. Spring rolls doing battle against each other. Um, looks like neither player has a lot of spring rolls right now, so it's not going to be too big of a deal. But that is a big deal that it's not a big deal because that means that there's not really an option for. Team Bonjois to really win the Springald War and have enough to pick off those nests of bees. So the nests of bees remain a pretty huge advantage that if they do go into a pitched battle, the infantry are going to clump up on top of each other as they go and target the same units. And the nests of bees have the potential, without Springalds to pick them off, to do major, major damage. That can be a couple rounds of attacks, or even one volley from several um, nests of bees on a group of infantry can win the battle and the game and the tournament. If that occurs. Uh, everyone is like arrayed here. We have one knight coming in just for a bit oh, of man. vision. I want to say it's vision and not just a needless sacrifice. Let's say it was tactical. It was tactical, yeah. <laughs> Let's see what's going on with the sacred set. All right, now we know what their RMP composition is. Good. Dude, this we, game most of knight... all makes me want to makes me want to play two on two. Like this game is so much fun. I actually, when I queue uh, for games, I usually put check all four because I think the team games are so much fun. Unfortunately, if you queue randomly and you check them all, you get one versus one 90% of the time. But I really do enjoy the team games for sure. Mm. Um, anyway, um, this is such an amazing finale to this tournament. We ended up with a 2v2 game where we've got massive armies. These players are starting to max out or get close to maxed out. They've yeah. spread out across the entire map. They're grabbing resources with town centers at the bottom and the top and what have you. And now we have these knights that have snuck all the way around the bottom of the map to come into the side, assaulting honor's base from below. What Pig is known for, the knight counterattack harassment. And it looks like uh, Red Panda is not quite in position. You can actually see his units being rallied away from that Ooh. battle because the force, the, the rally point is at the front. He's bringing them back here. They're going to fight some off. Looks like he didn't do too much damage, but he's drawn the army away to try and come in here for Petit Drogo to do some harassment here. Again, he's going to be fought back. The back and forth is so uh, so interesting here that oh, they, neither... The villagers! Oh, huge, huge. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, he's landing on the villagers. I didn't see behind the keep. Nice. Yep. Ten villagers, ten villagers down behind the berry bush. The knights are now charging the keep. Now this keep does not have burning oil. That keep is a yellow keep, and it takes five minutes for Delhi to finish burning oil upgrade. Boiling oil, I should say. Oh, uh, man. So they're getting some good damage in. They're not taking a lot of damage back. And now the big attack! It's 2v1! Oh. Pig isn't here! The nest of bees oh, are going to no. be getting caught out of position! Pig's units were down in the south, distracting, but now Team Bondra has rallied together. It is 2v1. The nest of bees are putting out significant damage, but they're going down to the knights, and he's being pushed back slowly. The siege units have been abandoned now. Here comes Pig from the side onto the archers, though. Does he have enough to equalize while the red knights are chasing the green down? The blue knights of Pig are coming in from the side, but those are crossbowmen. They are willing to kite back and stand forward and shoot them down, and all of Pig's knights are just getting slaughtered. He did not have the critical mass after losing some in the south okay, actually no he didn't houses. lose them they're still there they're still harassing killing houses but he they need to be in the main battle i think i mean many nests of bees died and it's painful but the front yeah. line for banjoa also died meanwhile cowardly True. petit drogo saved his front line even as he let his friend pig sacrifice his <laughs> cavalry in the meantime 20 cavalry were like killing a house in the bottom of the map a nice right. multi-pronged harassment but not quite what you want nessa bees are getting some connections on the range though yeah but you, as you mentioned bonjois front line has died and so now these crossbowmen are a little bit vulnerable now that the cowardly green knights have gone back into battle 
they're closing distance, but you can see they're oh. being taken out really well. The kiting is doing really, really effectively. And oh, there's actually traitors down here now as well, being killed off by knights. And the keep is going to go down in the center. So it looks like control of the three sites is going to be uh, even farther out of their reach as they get the middle one neutralized, although it looks like they've been cut off from the northern site as well. This Dude. game is bonkers, Grubby. There's stuff going on everywhere on the map. All kinds of crazy oh. skirmishes. Oh, this might be an absolute slaughter if he doesn't realize. Even if he does, these knights might chase down all those villagers. But not if the men-at-arms come in to escort them. And uh, it looks like he's not going to lose too many. But he did lose a few villagers there. Um, uh, but he's going to lose a few knights in exchange for a few villagers. At this stage in the game, maybe not one you want to have happen. Dude, I love what Pig is bringing to this match. It seems that Petit Drogo is bringing the rawest mechanics of macro, of unit yeah. production, of army control, and where Pig sometimes seems like he's the slowest to castle age, just a little bit more off on his pure, pure, pure macro strength, he makes it up in spades with his genius army movement, the disruption, keeping both, <laughs> whoop, uh, keeping both units <laughs> entirely busy, both uh, enemy players, denying farmlands, denying gold, genius play here, and it buys time for Petit Drogo to do what he does best, inch out inexorably across the map, now securing a keep on that mm. same site, on the graveyard of Honor's Keep. Wow. And we got some more skirmishing here. This is actually, wait, this is inside Honor's base now. Some knights coming in, they're actually going for an attack. And now instead of just having nests of bees in the back room, which are vulnerable, uh, Pig has his own crossbows coming in. So now his crossbows can pick off Red Panda's knights and leave his knights superior. Honors crossbowmen coming from the back as well. Um, it looks like there's men at arms oh. and knights here at the front for Petit Drogo. This could be a deciding battle, Grubby. Everything is concert converging on this one location. Four armies in one spot. There are some um, siege units in the back. I don't know if they're going to quite be able to do enough, though. And it looks like the knights are getting on top of the nest of bees. But then Pig's knights are closing on those knights as well. It is a pitched battle. It's an absolute slaughter. Every side is losing massive amounts of armies here. I'm not even sure who's going to come out ahead right now. But it looks like there's more red and green. I'm sorry, more blue and green than there is red. And they are going to annihilate Bourgeois' army. They've broken through. They do not have a lot of units left after that battle. But at the end of the day, there are tons of Bourgeois um, units dead on the ground. And we have... Pig and Petit Drogo running into their base to do damage to buildings and economy. Is there a way they can defend this, though? They they have a lot of buildings that they can go through before they're really damaging their infrastructure. I'm trying to figure out how are they going to come back here? What is the play for making a comeback after losing that big army and losing control of the middle of the map? And how will they ever deal with the nest of bees? Spring ults, superior knight force, superior men at arms force, usually the right. key in one-on-one. -on -one. But there's so much stuff with not just the French... Equites Chevalier player, Peak, going with knights. But there's even Guando carrying Chinese knights here as well from Petit Drogo, who is at 172 population out of 200. Big, by the way, building up a bit of a trust fund for his kids. You will have enough stone mm. for all of them, 2,600. <laughs> <laughs> That's just what I wanted when I was a kid. <laughs> I hope I get some stone when I grow up. <laughs> My son, I bequeath to you these stones. Oh. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> and crucially, though, they're starting to kill buildings and, and starting to take out houses. They're not quite on top of the production yet. They're not on top of the landmarks and the town centers yet. But I don't know how they can stop them from getting to that point. This is the point where, as a player, you need to be very patient. Bonjour, uh, Honor and Red Panda are going to have that patience. They're going to have the experience. Oh, the nest of bees <laughs> raining down on the village to the north, killing like 10 or 20 of them forcing the knights back as well they're trying to be patient and wait until they can rally their forces enough for a counterattack, and hope that pig and petit drogo go too far in but they may just have too much stuff they're rallying their forces to the front they're in amongst the buildings now the main town center is under threat and there's not a lot that it can do against all these knights and crossbowmen and siege units and just even bypassing it to go for the villagers this could be the real killing blow grubby taking out the economy behind the base and leaving yep. them with no ability to produce anything to combat this. And these are actually Arbolatria. They have five baseline armor against melee, much more resilient Ooh. to knights than crossbows would be. They also have a bonus shield 
activatable they can use to gain five ranged armor. The most tanky crossbow in the game. He now has Arbolitria and Knights fighting crossbows and archers. Honor bringing up the rear here, looking to drive out the invaders. Sacred Sight Control is actually two in the favor of Pig Petit Drogo team. And we could even see that Pig has started his Imperial Age tech. That is wow. elite knights, elite arbitrage, access to bombards, to royal rebeldequins. So many bonuses. And the, oh my God, the pressure continues. We've got green and red, green and blue knights everywhere in the trader right. lines and in the back line. Our feudal age hero is going to be the first to go imperial in this super late game, 2v2. But it may not be able, it may not even last that long, actually, because they are just absolutely slot. Look at all the... And Red Panda has GG'd! He's been eliminated! Pig and Petit Drogo have taken the third game, won this series, and won the Castle Cup, ladies and gentlemen, in epic fashion, in absolutely brilliant and magnificent, talented fashion. Pig and Petit Drogo are the champions. Well, well played, and uh, just an amazing show from them. Absolutely amazing, and what a finale to this series. Absolutely fun. A great showcase of what's possible in Age of Empires 4 in 2 on 2 format. My appetite has been whetted for more. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Such a fun game. The first attack, if you remember, started from Banjwa, Red Panda, and Honor with yeah. the archers, with the knights. They hurt big, and it was looking like it was just going to turn out in some of our earlier 2 on 2s, where one player gets grounded, gets put to the floor, the rug pulled out from underneath them. But Petit Drogo's war machine had turned on. Special dynastic units came out. Truganu driving back the archers. And Pig rallied, caught up in Castle Age. And together, the two established a slow foothold of the map at large. Yeah, it really was a, a, a form of play that I think is extremely strong and interesting and really fun to watch in Age of Empires 4, which is that, that really just kind of crushing back. It's almost like you know, two people pushing against each other and making a little bit of headway and falling back almost like a tug of war. And that's exactly what they did. They kind of took control of the middle and pushed back a little farther and, and made inroads into the base and had to fall back through the gate and et cetera, back and forth. But it was like just a slug fest. And slowly and steadily, they pushed farther and farther and farther in until that one battle where finally everyone committed. Everyone said, this is it. Everyone said, all of their forces into that one pitch battle do or die until everything was either dead or victorious and uh, because of the attrition of all that pushing and all of the activity around all of the map and the the counter attacking with the knights in the back and everything uh, around the map they were able to just take a victory despite the fact that the previous battle pig and petit drogo had kind of gotten separated and they got pushed back themselves because they weren't together once they reunited and pushed forward Maybe Bonjoa got a little bit overconfident because of that previous victory and overcommitted. I think you might be right. They charged Petit Drogo after killing five nests of bees under his keep, I want to say, in that chokehold where the knights still were, the Chinese knights, with a few new nests of bees. And in the meantime, who knows what pigs uh, Royal French Knights did in the back line, uh, always going for farms and so on. French Royal Knights, not something... They're actually perfect for pigs' playstyle. I love... But they went with the French, and we're going to ask them about their civilization choices and their experience in Castle Cup so far. But a viewer might be uh, might actually guess wrong if you guessed if you knew about the Snake Order and how they ended up with these ships. You may guess wrong which one was picked first. Uh, Rus uh, Mongols were picked first by the team that got to be picking their Sith first. Then Rus, no surprises there. Third, most players would expect. Chinese to be picked, which seems to be about the third strongest Civ right now. But no, it was French that was picked first for a pig. Then Holy Roman and English for Hazu and Trump. And then Chinese left at sixth place. A strong combination him, yeah. and definitely the reverse from what I would expect. Chinese third, French sixth, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I, I was very surprised that um, they didn't pick uh, the Chinese. Trump and Hazu didn't one of them pick the Chinese, but Maybe it's because, as you mentioned, they've been maining those civilizations. They said, hey, let's yeah. get what we're comfortable with. Let's get what we're good at. And that kind of left it open for on the return trip through the snake draft for uh, uh, 
Petit Drogo to pick up the Chinese civilization, which is very, very strong as well. And um, yeah, like you're saying, the, it, it made well for their playstyle. It's kind of interesting because, you know, in basically every RTS, it's standard policy to attack the front, but also harass the back at the same time while they're distracted, right? And in a 1v1 match, you have to do that at the same time. But in this case, it was kind of like each of the two were, were different hands. And, you know, uh, Petit Drogo was the one doing the frontline attack, and Pig was the other hand doing the sideline attacks and the harassment on the on the back end. And they were able to kind of coordinate that strategy in much the same way that a single person might do that in a match, but together. So it was really, really well done. And um, <laughs> Pig yeah, is in great. chat right now. He says, just letting Drogo 1v2 them because I'm a coward. I only fight villagers. <laughs> 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 we can see that right here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man and you know this this was some of the earlier harassment um but it was a it was consistent throughout the game and oh this was this was a moment when i thought that team Bolzo yeah. had kind of taken advantage because they trapped so many knights they killed so many knights and they managed to kill a few scouts and keep some some food from getting out alive as well um it felt like a big advantage because at this point in time you know their armies were together and they kind of lost a lot of each there were so many of these skirmishes in the middle of the map between just different combos of armies. And, and one thing that's universal about 2v2 is it's, it's always hard to keep track of who is who's, who is whom and which units belong to which player and which team is beating whichever other team in, in such a big melee. Yeah, for sure. But uh, I think we figured it out. <laughs> we tried to do a good job of letting viewers know who was who as well. Uh, wonderful attack here with the Nest of Bees and the Springholds to protect the Nest of Bee advantage. We're seeing the coup de grace, the final killing blow here by Petit Drogo and Pig. Uh, I must admit, I didn't expect it. After that initial start, I thought, okay, Bandra, you know, they're part of the name, the, of the team of the same name. They live together. They're going to have strategized together. But it's out of nowhere. It's Petit Drogo and Pig that together will be winning out and we see that final reaction there by pig let's hear what he says good job man dude your call on going a raid through the the wall actually yeah. was clutch that was clutch man yeah that, that's <laughs> nicely done <laughs> well and i we are going to go into an interview with these two gentlemen in just a moment as well and and yeah i mean it's interesting we we did the seeds for the semi-finals based on average elo and Petit Drogo and Pig were seeded third. So they actually had a lower average ELO than the other teams and still came out triumphant. And here they are. We're going to find out if we actually have Petit Drogo's audio this time. Congratulations, gentlemen. Hello. We said we might see you again and talk to you again. We have an opportunity. So Petit Drogo, how, how are you? Now that we can actually hear from you, since we didn't get to hear Thanks. from you before, how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling great. I've been feeling great ever since I won against Honor on, uh, on that map because... That game was kind of like a redemption because I played exactly like I wanted to and it worked. So that was very nice. And the 2v2 was uh, a little bit spooky, but uh, but it worked, man. We make knights, dude. We make knights and we win with them. <laughs> <laughs> so sick. Uh, Petit Drogo, we never got to hear from you in your mm -hmm. semi-finals game. Uh, is there anything you wanted to say about your game against Hazuops and how much you were hoping for uh, Pig to win his game after? Yeah, it was like, the thing that happened against Hazrob is like, oh, he's clearly leaning me. So I should stop mining stone and just get a bunch of units. But for some reason, with automatism, I can think them, but I won't do them. Because the next time I look at my base, I had enough stone to expand. So I was like, might as well expand because we mined 300 stone, you know? And then I just died because it was so obvious. I was very mad oh, at no. myself after this game because even though I'm not a pro at AOH of m by any mean, I feel like I should have played this game much better, but then we played a better game against uh, against Honor, so it's all it's all good in the end. Yeah, this this two on two game, just to bring it back to the final game, was so much fun to watch. And you know, Pig, Amazing. it seems like you've been having the short end of the stick when it came to getting to Castle Age. You never managed to progress towards <laughs> it. It was clear what what idea we had in you had in your one on one. We'll talk about that later. But you were futile here too, latest to Castle. But I feel like you played a very pivotal role in the distraction. Talk to us. Yeah, man, I got to be the punching bag, and then I got to be the, the guy who runs in in the back and kills all the villagers, um, which Drogo 
was the one who called that out because he kept going okay they're pushing you know we're ready to fight dude I'm, I'm pretty ready to fight i think we should go and i'm like yeah i got uh four knights he's like what <laughs> you don't have an army to help and i'm like sorry bro and i'm like i think we need to turtle for a bit longer and like every time he wanted to counter push i'm like um sorry dude i'm not even reinforcing i'm just recovering my economy and trying to catch up in the, the tech and the upgrades and at some point he was like you know what they've got their walls up they got some springles they started to snipe down some of his siege and he was like just go attack that wall on the right he pinged it and i just took every single knight ran over there and i think uh they were maybe five seconds short of getting the backup wall up if they got that wall off um. up, uh they could have bought themselves a lot more time but that getting in there was a really big distraction and then did the same thing on the left side of the map as well so there was Drogo, the uh, the shot caller, who saved our bacon there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, also, yeah, I, I, could, I took a couple of 1v2 fights in that game that I'm not sure I had to take, but uh, I, I, I believe in my units. <laughs> uh, what, what about your one-on-one, -on -one, uh, sorry, one-on-one -on -one pick? Uh, you had a strat of mass knight all-in. Yeah. I even stopped building villages at some point there. Um, Drogo <laughs> suggested this as if someone's just... Let's be real, Rus aren't the biggest brain players. Like, if you look at all the races, the Rus players are the ones who are like, oh, I'm going to make a really fast castle and build horse archers. Then I'm going to pick up the relics. Like, they always do the same thing, right? So I was like, let's hope he doesn't scout. And I'm going to do... <laughs> you look at the pro scouts. I'm doing fast castle as well. It's totally normal probably should have mm. hid me stables in a forest or something like that so at least it was a bit of a surprise or i should have gone in earlier because he just smooth build order um i didn't take a single wolf i forgot to kill those so he was rich in gold and yeah. uh yeah, yeah it felt like i was like i i think there was still a chance to transition but because it was my first time playing the build i liked the idea i didn't really have the follow-up mapped out i think after killing a lot of villages i could have basically just kept him occupied by threatening backstabs for several minutes, even though he has the superior army, he can't really pin the knights down because they're running around in different squads. And I could have made an mm. archer transition since I did have maybe a 10 villager lead. It just meant I needed to pull off food onto the wood, which actually would have been conveniently timed rather than running villages off to get boars and in the corners of the map, like there were these huge gaps in my income as all my food kept running out because he got a lot more mm. of my hunts. Um, I maybe took one of his hunts. He took like six of my deers or something like that. So there was like all these hiccups where I was like just a few more nights and there'd be a pause in night production while my villagers had to migrate. So mm. it didn't quite work out, but maybe if I had it mapped out a little better, it could have happened. Yeah. On the, also, as the one that suggested the build, because I lost it twice on leather, uh, the <laughs> main idea here too is all, you, you have knights, right? But at the same time you do this, you come in with like all of your scouts plus one or two and you grab all of the carcasses while all of this is happening. So you really like, mm. you punch the Russian player like this really hard. And I'm pretty sure <laughs> as the Russian, if you don't have pikemen, you actually just lose. You lose straight up. And this game, I was like, if Pig goes a little bit earlier, I actually think he can do a ton of damage, but you respected the Russian too much. Like I'm telling you, man, Russians, the castle age, I can't make to make all archer. It's going to be so great. It's literally <laughs> every all archer, every single game. Me too, myself included. Yeah, same. And I was surprised and that he, he went fears. for double barracks. It was yeah. uh, it was really good play by him. Yeah, good reaction. That's what you have to do, I think. Mm. How Mold did track. that? Uh, what's that? No, you go ahead. How did that final game feel? I'm curious because it was difficult to keep track of what was going on. Having a caster eye view of the entire map, and you guys didn't have that. There was stuff going on in every part of the map at once, and you guys were attacking and retreating and. Uh, what was that like? Was it hectic? How did you keep track of things amidst all the chaos? Um... It, was, it was kind of chaotic uh, at a few points. I know that I was always being very conservative with my army because at the front, because it was basically just a rally point that was always about a screen behind Drogo's army. And I was going to kind of rely on him saying, hey, stuff's going down because all of my actions were on my economy mm. and kind of just trying to backstab. So Drogo was kind of the one who I think had to keep track of their army a little bit better because i mean he could have got jumped on at any point 1v2 and he did yeah, i mean, I mean <laughs> we didn't we didn't have a fast army like not at all so i feel like it was pretty hard to get caught from uh i was a little bit scared at the beginning where i was like yeah they're going knights on archers i'm like oh shit they're gonna kill us doing all strategy oh no <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not sure if my response was good, but the first thing that popped into my mind is like, I can't make regular archers. I need, like, what's the name of the special archer from the Chinese? Zangano? 
Zuganu. Zuganu, yeah. I need Zuganu. Which, when I think back on it, was probably very greedy. But because I got it so early, I had like the faster villager production really early on. And you can see in the graph at the end, I'm like super high up in the villager production. Which uh, I wanted to do a play to defend myself. It was actually a greedy play. Says how much I understand about the game currently, but hey, it worked. I think it was correct. It was correct. Oh, I'm I'm happy. I'm I think. Approved. I mean, your rank is very similar to mine. So like we're both swimming in the water here, uh, looking for mm -hmm. places to hold on to. But I think Sugunu were correct because with archers, you may just not be able to outmass uh, the archer ball of honor. Yeah, I mean yeah. to be honest, my rank with Chinese is like 300. I, I can't rank up with Chinese. It's impossible. <laughs> oh wait, like, I saw your rank climbed. You didn't do that with Chinese. No, I tore rushed with Mongol like six times in a row last night, just to raise my <laughs> number a little bit. It's like the equivalent of a model putting on their makeup before the big show on the runway. You decided to play some Mongol games to bring up your rank because you knew oh, people are going to request your rank here. Yeah, it's like, oh my god, Drogo got to this rank with Chinese. He must really have improved. I knew you were going to say that, so I, <laughs> so I, went, in, I went in with Mongol. <laughs> I said That's that, amazing. I was like, well, Petit Drogo did drop hundreds of ranks from 62 to 450, but he got back to 112. He carried him up by his bootstraps. Nope, he's a Mongol dirty abuser. Just for appearances. <laughs> you guys are rank 300 plus and 400 plus on the ELO, and you've beaten rank 100 plus and 100 minus. That's insane. Yeah, I think, I mean, you know, we've that... got that, I think there's the baboon energy that we bring, you know, like we don't overthink it. We're like, all right, the first one, you know, like you guys, I I, I love listening to the, the um, first cast of Drogo's map and, and you guys, you, you had all this five head, you know, 300 IQ map video <laughs> stuff and we're like, China defensive, like, nope. defensive map, we put China and I'm like, oh, the mind game Grubby's describing actually makes a lot more sense, but like, we didn't think that before. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Now, we actually yeah. did note that, um, you know, we were talking about how China is this defensive sieve that loves to turtle and go for mass econ. But, but T-Drogo, we didn't really see the typical meta China build from you in any of the games. Was that Nobody a told decision? Them that. Or was that, or was that a response to what you saw from your opponents? Or did you just not play enough China to know how to do the... The boom if you're playing Mongol rushes instead or what what was the I'm sorry, I got distracted. Are you asking me about my quib my strategy in the second game? I'm asking in general you didn't play uh, meta Chinese and what was the decision? Yeah, yeah, okay. Well listen, in StarCraft 2, I'm known that the guy that just goes and kills the dude. That's literally that i my entire career has been me just going and killing <laughs> the guy, even if it's not the best strategy. So when I picked Chinese, I was like, I'm not playing like big macro game. It's not happening. I just want to kill the guy. Mm. So I went to it. Like, you know, you know, on Marine Law, there's a lot of great tutorial in French, though. So eh, you guys can't really use that, can you? But I can. So he was like, hey, pro scout into knights. So he played the build a bunch. Against Top Civ, it sucks ass. It's not good. But against Daily, hey, now we're talking. <laughs> we're going to make some lancers and we're going to go into some <laughs> mineral lines. I mean, wood lines. I'm going to kill stuff. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, that's that's incredible. Well, congratulations on your Age of Empires 4 competitive debut. Uh, is it enough to yoink you back into competition, uh, Pig? Or are you going to keep doing awesome things like sleeping on stream and doing like 150 hour streams? Uh, I think I got to like over 300 hours actually, but um, was it 300? What? Yeah, it was, it was it was over a month. So yeah. Um, no, I am. I am basically an internet jester at this point, rather than a competitive pro gamer. But I, I'm, I'm really enjoying Age of Empires. I didn't expect it to hook me so much, um, so I'm going to be playing a lot more of it. Uh, I wouldn't of consider didn't. myself super, super duper competitive. But I think it would just be, you know, I'll play some tournaments for fun. It always gets the the competitive juices flowing, right? You know, there's something about playing when there's something more on the line, even if it's just a small weekly tournament for fifty bucks. Uh, you're going to learn a little bit more. Your opponents are going to cheese you and pull out their special builds a little bit more. So I'm going to be streaming uh, a bit of Age of Empires over the coming weeks for sure. Fantastic. Awesome. All right. About, Any final thoughts? You? Sorry, I wanted to ask yeah. Petit Drogo's uh, future and then we'll get to uh, Drogo, StarCraft, Age of Empires 4. What's your schedule looking like and your plans? Uh, well, um, I have um, a French tournament in StarCraft that I actually want to compete in pretty much, uh, pretty well. So I'm going to do a bit of that. 
In my head, I'm still playing both, obviously. Like when Dreamax is in this year, I want to I wanna perform. I did that year, it was okay this year. I was still like, you know, a top 16 European player. So, you know, even if when we don't go to tournaments because of the current situation, it's kind of killed my motivation a little bit because only playing a lot of tournaments mm. is rough. As far as I'm concerned right now, uh, Adrift Empire is really fun and it's not too intense. I can, these days, I can play three hours of StarCraft 2 and then I'm done. I am done, especially if I'm streaming. But with Age of Empire, I can play all day. And also, I'm not super good at Age of Empire. Some StarCraft 2 players are like super high in the ranking. I'm not, I'm really struggling. I feel like when you play Protoss, a lot of automatism that you you get are not really useful. Like I, I tried to warp in my units a couple of times and it didn't quite work. <laughs> Unless with Mongol, I could, I could, I could warp in Springle with Mongols and I really liked that. That was great. <laughs> That's but, true. But outside of that, I can't. But I'm having a lot of fun playing Edge of Empire, so I'm gonna keep playing for a bunch because you know there's no big tournament right now in StarCraft. And if I get pro gamer level, that's great. If I don't, well, I would have had fun along the way. So that's pretty much my thing. And I also stream on my channel, but I stream in French because there's a pretty big community. But maybe sometimes I stream in English. I don't know. You know, I'm I'm always stuck in between the language barrier. But I like Edge of Empire, and I hope I'll get good enough to show up on like YouTube videos and stuff very soon. I hope. Fantastic. I got a new YouTube video. I remember, Gary. Thank you very much for posting that. Even though you won, I was still great. <laughs> I'm on the game. I know you only let me win to, or in order to get on the channel, though I do post losses as well, but you got to make it look close. That is true. I'll, do, I'll, I'll try better next time. <laughs> and for anyone that's uh, watching at home right now that is taking any interest in any of our players, our champions here, or anyone else, all of them are content creators that have Twitch channels and what have you, and YouTube channels, so you can find them all. Uh, we've got... Twitter names here next to everyone right now, and you can look everyone else on the Castle Cup website on the uh, um, wisdom announcement and all that kind of stuff if you want to know more. There's plenty plenty more Age of Empires and StarCraft and Age of Empires 2 and all kinds of other content being created by these guys in many different languages. Yo, guys, final thoughts. Can we, can we turn it around and ask you guys, when are we going to see you guys playing tournaments? Next tournament, is it going to be a Moltrap Grubby team? You didn't hear about the two on two plan between the winners and the two of us next weekend? Oh, I didn't tell you. Oh, heck yeah. No. I remember there was a two v two plan. I didn't... Oh, all right, let's, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Another, another maybe $10,000 again or no? Yeah, another $10,000. <laughs> Your wisdom. Right, we cool? We cool? <laughs> no, but uh, actually, you guys really have whetted my appetite for two on two. That looked a lot of fun if games are like that. Uh, like you said, it takes a bit to climb on the ELO ladder, but maybe we can do some show matches sometime. Uh, me and someone, I'm not 100%, maybe Moltrap can cast it, not 100% how the level is yet, but me, someone against the two of you, I think that would be awesome. Nothing promised, but it would be fun. So thanks for that turnaround and putting me on the spot, pig. <laughs> no worries, man. That's what we're here for. You know, everyone's, we're, we're, we're very happy, by the way. You were asking for last thoughts. I just want to say a big thanks to you guys for inviting us on um it's a real pleasure and it's kind of cool because i think we were both having fun playing age of empires and then we just got a, a kick in the butt to actually try and grind a whole bunch the last week or so and really try and figure out the game and i feel like um it's that rts experience where you grind hard and try to improve and you end up just becoming more aware of how little you know about the game but it's kind of cool it opens up the the possibilities so I'm, I'm having fun grinding so thanks for inviting us man it's a fun yeah, time when so nobody knows about the game because it's new and everyone's still figuring it out. So there's a lot of leeway for, for, for that kind of stuff. I did just find my ally, the Viper, just uh, chimed in in chat. Wow. So I guess we can solidify that. I think, you, I think you've I think you got a better chance with him as your ally than me, I've got to say. <laughs> <laughs> all right, 3v2. We get, we get to bring in another player. We do 3v2 if you get the Viper, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Yo guys, thank you so much for joining this tournament. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks for all your efforts in bringing your A game. Uh, so much fun to watch and honor to have you guys. Good luck in all your future endeavors. Congrats once again. Uh, say hi from us to your loved ones and uh, have a great weekend. Yeah, thank you so much. Thanks. Uh, all right, awesome. well, I guess that's going to do it for the Castle Cup. What an amazing tournament. I had high hopes and uh, positive expectations for this uh, this whole series, and they were all completely blown out of the water. Um, 
just uh, amazing stuff from beginning to end. Really, really cool. And there's Logan <laughs> dropping in to, to show his appreciation for the tournament as well. Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, I, I, I was... I was nervous because, you know, my name is on the tournament and stuff, and uh, I knew you were going to do great. It's so great to cast with you again, uh, Mole Trap. Uh, I was agree. worried. Thank you. I was worried if we were going to get any two on two, but the players delivered in spades. Every yeah. single best of went to the two on two. Great games. We saw all eight sips represented, and uh, yeah, we've got a beautiful memory to take from 2021 here. Uh, into the next year where no doubt we'll see lots more age of empires for content hopefully wisdom and i and perhaps you can make our return for more aoe content if you enjoyed this make sure to uh yeah, check out everyone's twitter let us know check out wisdom's twitter and let them know as well age of empires 4 it's here and it's awesome thank you so much for watching everybody from mole trap and myself and the team of wisdom have a great night. Thanks for being here and have a great weekend. Peace.